here for that. Anyone? Oh, we're here for that. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I'm smiling. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I thought it's a really good looking <laughs> uh, Julie, do you have anything you want to say about this? Um, nothing in particular, but it meets your regulations and it seems pretty straightforward to me. Do you want to tell us who you are and what, what you're doing here? Sure. I'm Paige Lewin. I'm the owner of Test and Time Interiors. And um, I would just love to have a sign on high part of the building. I'm renting space from our house design and build. And um, I'd love to just be able to identify my space. I have a, I have a separate entrance. And that's what I'm looking to do. Um, any comments from the board? Issues? Nothing that I wish to actually comment on. Everybody complies. So. Yeah. The, uh, um, this is a matter of curiosity. The uh, history of the chain link fence. I don't know the history of the chain link fence, actually. Cause I, I, um, I moved in in late, late summer, mm -hmm. and it's okay. been there for a long time. Forever. I, okay. I think that, uh, I don't know for sure, but I actually think it's owned by the people who on the parking lot, which is, yeah, yeah, but I don't know. Okay. So that's it. You're just going to have that one sign, no illumination. No illumination. No illumination, no. <coughs> There's a light on the side of the building though, right? Isn't there? Uh, there's a light by the door. I don't have any comments or issues. No issues? No. It's always a good <coughs> submittal and always a good sign. So, Thank you. I'm always happy when I see your name on the application. Thank you. <laughs> okay. Did you have any issues? No, I didn't have any issues on it at all. Move that the CBDC uh, approve the certificate of appropriateness for the sign at 59 High Street, Tess and Ted Interiors. Second. All in favor? Thank you. Thank you. I'll be in touch with you guys tomorrow. Okay, okay. great. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, do you not have a stamp? I'll get it. She has it in the bucket. Everything else is noticed, so we move for it. Um, you should wait for the other scheduled items. You could backfill with a discussion of sub-district guidelines if you want, although I don't know if you might have some people showing up late yeah. for that. Um. Is anyone here for that? Discussion of the sub-district guidelines? Any minutes, unfortunately, I haven't had a chance to do them. Anything else that we need to discuss? Planning wise? Showing up for Lakeview Ave. Yeah, the hearing's scheduled for March 7th. Okay. Scheduled to open. There's a meeting at the Board of Selectmen where I gather a butters will have a presentation tomorrow night. Okay. And we, I guess in the process we'll learn more about this. Uh, See Barbara does for us and, and what it doesn't do. Mm 
Christine, do you have any updates? The only thing I have is um, I did reach out to Nelson Nygaard to start a conversation about um, what they might be able to do for us if we had a small contract with them. Start the conversation with downtown parking. Um, but I think as we discussed here, the data collection piece would be something that I think staff would do. And we just serve the consultant services if it, it's not the right one. But that's really the issue, what, you know, collecting the data and getting the handle on utilization in downtown. Could start the discussion on sub districts and pick it up. Recap it yeah, later. Recap it later. All right. Yeah. That my intention was that you would backfill with that if you wanted yeah. to. So. Okay. Um, so, is there something here in our stuff? Or? No, I have a document Nick prepared. Just some initial thoughts. Yeah, I'll just, pull up. I just started sketching some stuff out. And these are really first thoughts that I saw. Not a lot of, um, um, not a lot of thought, but not, not a lot of in-depth investigation on exactly everything that's going on. But when you look at it from a big picture, and given what you know, some of the comments were from the, from the uh, Google Street development and places like that. And, this area seemed easy enough to look at, I think. Um, I'm just trying to remember what I wrote. Parts here. But I think that, that this site, it's three different parcels, but it, it's one development. And I can't imagine that it would ever be broken up into smaller ones. But if it, if it was, that might complicate things. Um, we would have to really see what the implications of that were. But if you look at it as an entire site, there's the north edge, which impacts green, and the smaller residential areas. And then there's the Washington Street and the other corner, which maybe could could be something different. Right? There's a dichotomy between those two parts of it. And then there's just a big piece of land in the middle, and there's some great grade. There's a good grade drop from north mm -hmm. to south. So if you think about it, you could potentially have parking under, take advantage of that grade somehow, maybe parking under the north edge, and the, the south edge could be taller, and that would leave you this whole middle section. Instead of having a sea of parking, you might have some green space opportunities. So that's what I was doing here, and that's what the different slides show. This one just explains to you what each piece looks like. So the acreage of each one, how many units are on there right now, and what that um, density equals for each one. And I think if you look at it on average across the whole site, it's about 40 units per acre. And I don't think, I don't think it needs to be more than that on average. I know we've been allowing higher densities for these sort of smaller compact developments that we've done, but there's a lot of room here. So I think somebody could, could make it work at a lower density. Plus, 
I still believe that we're talking about cumulative impacts now. Mm -hmm. right. As we start to roll in, every, every, the next developer has to take into account what the previous one did and, and what the impacts are. So maybe they don't get as much. You know, they weren't first at the table and now there's not enough room and so we will get as many units perhaps. If they can't make it work, that's too bad. Right. So this just shows you what's happening on this side. I think, what's the next slide? Do you know if they have the same owner, these parcels? I believe it's just one development. Isn't it just all? It's, just, it's one development with three parcels. Yeah, it has the same yeah. owner on they, the I think they are. Card. I think that's right. We used the GIS to get this information. But yeah. We kind of pulled it up. <coughs> This one. This was talking about what's right. what's going to happen where, and definitely, I think on the Green Street side, we're talking about residential only and and height limits that don't impact that street. And, and this is where we want some input from historic. Like, what does that street mean? You know, everybody was concerned about the historic nature of that neighborhood. They're all small houses, and even though the the newer additions to some of those houses. Um, are well done or well kept anyways they're, they're well maintained and they're beautiful homes for somebody i don't know that they're necessarily in keeping with the historic nature of the other buildings the small little cottage style homes they were so what does that mean going forward do any of those houses are they allowed to be expanded just as a residence you know what does that do to the historic right. what are the historic implications of all that i'd like to hear what they have to say about that there could be the potential for mixed use um, on this bottom edge if we can find some parking, but definitely not on the top edge. And I think actually on the Washington, the three buildings on Washington Street, I don't know if you could do commercial there because I don't know where you'd park people and there's a lot of traffic at that intersection, so you really have to get them off the street potentially. What's behind right now? It looked like there was parking behind right now. Yeah, it's a big seat <coughs> parking. Why not continue with that? You'd have to bring people into the site to do that. It's like there's a little... Yeah, you know, there's, so there's, there's obviously access to the parking. <coughs> so it could, be co it could be commercial, but it wouldn't be the same sort of street fronting yeah. commercial. You're not route. getting the impact of the storefront. Right. See, I, I think it's a great spot for a storefront. <laughs> but it's walkable only. Yeah. No, you can't park in front and of that's for sure. A, but again, that's a perfect spot for walkable only because it's right there at the train station and it could continue to extend. No, I agree. I agree with that and that's what I want to hear. But I don't know that someone's going to buy that yet. Mm. Well, maybe when the time comes for this lot to be developed. Yes. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, I just, I guess my inclination is not to limit it to residential only. Mm -hmm. I mean, that is a nice walkable spot. Mm -hmm. And it's so close to Main Street, in addition, that it would be close to the new development at Sunoco as well. So. Sure. I, I agree with Rachel, and I think that the northern section that actually abuts Green Street and is across from other residential might be like a slightly more appropriate area to limit to residential. On Green Street? Yeah. Yeah. Right. Yeah, well, that's... It's also a tiny little street, so. Right. Well, as I reviewed this uh, earlier today, I mean, I, I took the opportunity, drive, drove around uh, Johnson Woods and the, the downtown area, um, and it became clear from the looking at this stuff online that we might be better served doing a, a three-dimensional um, aware discussion on this because there's substantial grade changes uh, from like the uh, Main Street and, and an even corner all the way down. I mean, and there's the change in, in grade, the topography is going to be more uh, constraining on what you can actually get into there than perhaps the, the actual use you know, the, there's the big parking area there, but it's like three different levels. Is it? You know, you're driving up and down hill to get into the parking areas. See, I think that's advantageous. Well, yeah. it is, but I think that we ought to be pay attention to it in, in terms of the planning steps. Mm -hmm. Because there's, there's some things that you, um, the E-Mark building, you know, when it's built out, is going to be visually shorter 
than you know X Y Z feet of height. And if you put a, a 40 foot building up on top of a hill, it's going to look huge. So that there's the uh, impact, if you will, of what we might want to allow or disallow <coughs> is, is very much dependent on the, <laughs> the bedrock, if you will. We've, we're already running into it, I guess, with the um, Sunoco re station rebuild because the that side of Main Street is substantially lower than the Ash Street on the other side. It was almost two stories worth of, of lower. And I think one thing to keep in mind here too is, you know, just assuming that I was just looking at these three parcels, right? But if you come down, if you go up High Street, right? Turn on to High Street. There are other properties there that could be combined. You don't know what's going to happen really or how they might be split up or divided or recombined. And certainly High Street is a perfect location for, you know, for a storefront, for right. setbacks that have outdoor seating and that kind of activity. And if we're, if we're very, very lucky, you know, somebody bought, is buying a Rite Aid, maybe they'll convert one of them into a, a supermarket. But <laughs> Um, I guess uh, I like having this sort of some of this um, thinking about you know what the different components are um, I guess my take on this is that consistent with I think consistent with that what everyone said so far is that you know looking at this I, I guess I would be hesitant to look at this as sub districts um, as um, because then we're we're creating lines, um, we're creating boundaries, which <coughs> we struggle with cons constantly um, because all of our boundaries are you know half, half a parcel or you know are tiny right. you know and those boundaries are always the issue and and I guess I would like it if we could think um, more about what the nature of the street or what that edge is it, what we're looking for that edge to be and you know you've talked about you, the way that you did this right here you know looking at what Green Street can and should be um, and what that other corner on Washington can and should be and instead of thinking about it as a district a sub district maybe at more as a <coughs> performance you know if these conditions happen then this is what you you get or you how do we do, do that though I'm concerned about the mechanism within 40 yards mm -hmm. let's let's do that, do that? I had something? asked the state that question and I don't remember the answer I think um, I also asked them some sub district questions yeah, and I they thought, answered those yeah I, I thought the way that they an that they answered was if we create sub-districts, then we need to go back and modify the map. Right. Um, but you can put, create um, uh, guidelines. You can create your, your guidelines right. with any parameters that you want. Right. The design guidelines, yeah. Yeah, so instead of, um, I, I think we en probably end up the same place in terms of how we think about the spaces um, uh, but maybe not drawing lines on a on a map um, that are static because the other thing I think we need to think about is um, let's let's take Green Street for or Washington Street um, in, in Ash that area um, as one property develops What's that mean for the property across the street? It changes the context, right? And we don't want to necessarily lock in the context of a parcel because the two adjacent parcels are the way they are in, you know, 2018, right? right. Um, that as we want it, 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 we should be thinking about, right, this is, to some degree, some of these. Um, areas will transition and there may be some that we don't want to transition from what they are right now I think we could probably do that um, sort of set it up that way 
It might be harder for a developer to navigate to if they want to buy two parcels that are technically in two different sub-districts. Like, how do they... Because we don't know when properties are going to come for sale and when they might be combined. Yeah, yeah but I guess I was just seeing the sub-district just applying these rules. And so, you don't think you'd ever say something like, um, you know, this happens on Green Street or this happens on Ash between Washington and... Get that specific, or uh, how would you? What That's kind of I think if we does it have to be like an, an like the other zoning map with the with the area coding, or can it be exactly as you just said, street oriented? Because <laughs> I would say Ash and Washington can be mixed, and that's and then I would say Green Street cannot. I think it's the, what John said. If we call them sub-districts, then technically under 40R, we need to change the map. But if that's we just build it into design guidelines, like if this, then that, right. then that's a little bit of a different process. A more of a flexible process. Um. I, I guess, you know, if your parcel is, an adja is adjacent to a mm -hmm. historic, uh, I'm going to use the term historic parcel, but and we can define that however we wanted to. Um, maybe not use that term, but um, then here are the thing, here's the way that your parcel, your development needs to play, uh, take that into account. Right. Right, but these are adjacent to that hmm. parcel, <coughs> and who knows what could happen with that. You know what I'm saying? Like, the word adjacent also. Yeah, and, and I, ju I just threw something out. Maybe yeah. it's not adjacent. Maybe it's on the same street. Maybe it's, um, front you know, basically. front frontage. Yeah. yeah. Language yeah. will have to be precise with yes. language. Yeah. But I don't think that gets us. I think the thinking of the districts ends up being the same where, well. where we want to be, the, where we want to go. I mean, if, uh, if you want to keep. If we want it, like you said, we need input from um, historic commission about um, about how do you do you, you know what what is Green Street? Well, we need we need some of the, the background facts, yeah. if you will. You know, now we got to where we are, um, which we got some of that with the uh, Art Deco, with the Emark building and so forth. We've done it a couple of times, <coughs> also with some of the stuff on Main Street, mm -hmm. downtown Main Street like the Venetian Moon Building and some of the same, uh, knowing the background of the, the architecture and the building and the, the uh, So could you flip to the um, was Eastern Bank site? I think I have. Did I do that one too? No, keep going. That's the, so that, yeah. right? So on the bottom of this, <coughs> bottom of this page is the, um, the Ghoul Street development we just did. Really, I think I see that as the last possible site to develop like that on this street now. The, the bank site can front Haven Street and do what it has to, and then the Green Street side would be much more subdued and, and much more broken down, but I don't think anything else can happen to the right of this development because I, there's, I don't think there's capacity right. at all. On Gold Street. On, yeah. Oh, yeah, no. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah, Put a, put that right there. Just wrote residential only. That's what's happening right now. Actually, there's some historic. So, there's where, historic what are structure. you saying? Uh, to the right of what? To the right of the Gold Street development, right where you're. Right here. Is. Yeah. So that's like the last building that can that can take 40R. I think. Like this one. No. No. This this yeah. is the last. Okay. The last one we approved. I don't think anything else can really. I don't think anybody would be able to answer all the questions that are going to mm -hmm. come up, and deal with all the issues that are going to come up beyond that. Bank building can because it can do everything it has to from the Haven Street side. But even then, you know, there might be limits because of what the traffic study might say. The, <coughs> the next one over yeah. is the oil company. Yeah. Could, Could with depending, depending on what happens at the bank. Because I think that needs to play in, right? There's that, you know, if, if the bank does something where there's where there's circulation on the back side of there, yeah. the back side of that property, then maybe there's some capacity there to to keep it 
um, uh, more commercial all the way up to that spot and then end it. Um, I don't see any commercial on, on the bank building. I see it. I, I, I don't either, but I can imagine that it could. This is right here. I just don't think it can work. I don't see how it would work. I think we pushed the limits. We got. I think that the oil company is lot. I don't think can address the issue sufficiently. This is right. This one. Yeah, it's two buildings. There's a garage in the back. Yeah. Thing in the back. A res a residential structure in the front. <coughs> and currently, if you go there any day, you'll find 20 cars parked on them. Yeah, no, I mean. They pull in and they drive their trucks out. So it's already being used heavily. But the, that's just the nature of the structures, too. As you go to the right there, as you go to the east, there's, um, I think that, that first house immediately to the east of the bank, uh, yeah, on that side, I think that's like a, a really old, historic, almost original structure. It's um, <coughs> set way up. Um, it's been kept. <coughs> I wouldn't want to see that one fall. Um, but I just think the rest of the houses are pretty small on that side. I, I don't know. What else you could add to it? That's a difficult site. So that's what I was thinking here. Was that I really would like to see the building on the corner go away? <laughs> you know that mansard roofed um, three story. <laughs> that's how you put the green space right on top of yeah. it. Yeah, right? <laughs> <That's why. laughs> the green, 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 green space that would be. See, right? you know, it, you, the auto body clinic just fixed my car last week, but I feel like that zone right there is an opportunity to really change the. Yeah, and we've talked about that in the past when we were looking. We were originally coming up with this, the district. It's not that we don't like those businesses because they're right. they're valuable. And but in there, it's not. Them, them actually. Right. Oh yeah. <laughs> but, but, um, just you know, my car. It's, it's a different. You want a different kind of storefront along that right. edge. I think. Yeah. But it's from the, the feedback we got from the state and some of the other uh, thoughts about sub districts. I suspect the sub-district is something that isn't going to work for <coughs> the area that we're talking about. Was using the design guidelines is, is a great idea. The, okay. And we can use that to, to do the locality, or locality of reference, whatever you want to call it, uh, within the, the region. We might want to consider in those guidelines uh, Going with absolute elevation instead of uh, building height in all cases. They'll say, okay, maximum elevation is such and such, you know, feet above sea level, because that's where you can start to deal with the three dimensional nature of the territory. Yeah, okay. And then people will have to develop because sea levels are rising. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, well, the data is a mass datum or something. I just want to remind the board that that um, design guidelines would require DHCD approval. Yes. So, just as an FYI. Yeah, we still have to go through the process. Um, does it go through town meeting? Design no, guidelines don't require guidelines, you know. town meeting. Just requires this board developing them, approving them, and then they have to be approved in the state. We have our our round of public hearings as well. Right. Do it here without hearing. Yep. Okay. Uh, we did have workshops. We actually said we would have some workshops, right? Get input from the neighbors. Get input from the businesses, historic and any other. Get input from fire early on and see if they have any issues moving around sites. Because that's definitely a differentiator too. I mean, in, in, in terms of a performance metric, is um, street width and yeah. the ability yeah. to access um, our and system. utilities infrastructure too. Right, understanding where we are. I know we, we kind of came up with a number early on when we were doing this, but I don't think we've heard from them. We keep saying that there is a capacity for 200 and something units on the grid. You mean uh, in the 40? Like sewer and water capacity. Sewer and yeah. water, yeah. That's what it was. So it'd be good to understand where we really stand now. Right. Um, 
That twenty number was that additional or is that total? Uh, it was a total number of two hundred something. Yeah, I don't remember the exact number. I can get it for you tomorrow, though. I have it. I'm just thinking that we might be very close to that two hundred number right now. Well, yeah, that's why I keep saying that every developer from now on is going to, if you will, pay the price of the previous people that came in and we, you know, you can make some assumptions about, okay, the economics of this project look like this. We don't need a very detailed economic um, analysis because we know how it's going to work. But now, traffic, you know, we, we need to know exactly what's going to happen. We need to plug in all of the stuff that's going on now. Right? There's probably more intersections and more detailed analysis of what they're doing with these movements. Not just, well, it's 20 cars. It's, it's not mm. It's not a right. big number. Yeah. It's, well, it's kind of weird when you're dealing with traffic. You, if, they, if the intersection goes down a grade from an A to a B or a B to a C, <coughs> you know, there's an issue. But if you've got a failing intersection, it doesn't matter what you do to it. You throw a billion cars at it. Who cares? Right, right. It's but failed. We, we can't <laughs> just accept <laughs> the... The, um, the standards that have been thrown at us for traffic analysis to date, right? We need to look at it more detail than that. Yeah. We need to ask different questions yeah. like we did to yeah. um, to the, was it Green Street? No. Well, the Sunoco Station. The yeah. Sunoco Station, yeah. right? We made them look at different movements. Yeah. yeah. So okay. it's going to come down to things like that. Because you're right, the typical um, traffic analysis in the special, especially in the in the downtown district, doesn't really tell you the story and doesn't really right. isn't going to work. Uh, that may work, that may be fine, actually on South Main Street or that kind of location, but downtown that's, that's well South Main Street we've got the road diet right yeah it's negative different issue, yeah. yeah. <laughs> okay well I really want a lot of input from you guys. <coughs> Especially from you, Rachel. I, have, I kind of dug into it this week. Well, we can take this up after. We'll show up for it. So, let's see. Why don't we move on to um, some modifications to an approved definitive subdivision plan for 364 Lowell Street, Lyle Estates. <coughs> Do we have a notice for that? I sent a courtesy notice. It wasn't legally required to let the abutters know that there's a modification. Um, I'm not reading it. <laughs> yeah, you don't have to read it if you want. Um, it's basically essentially the same as every other notice that we ever sent. Um, okay, who's here for um, 364? Oh, they're in the hall. <laughs> I'm sorry, I didn't realize that you were waiting for it. Okay, tell us where we are. Oh, you were ready to go? Yeah. Mm -hmm. yep. well, thank you, and thank you for your patience. My name is Bill Crowley. I'm an attorney from uh, Haven Street, representing Jameson Properties. Good evening, commissioners. Um, we're here to request uh, some minor changes to the uh, plan that was approved last year. Uh, to refresh your memory, the plan was approved uh, allowing for a uh, waiver of the right of way to 40 feet. That 40-foot um, wide uh, right of way would have placed the existing house at 364 Lowell Street within 15 feet of the sideline, requiring us to then go to ZBA. So part of the conditions for your signing the plan was for us to get ZBA approval. We went before ZBA last year and uh, for two, two hearings, uh, and they were not favorably disposed to uh, granting the variance um, for, among other reasons, the fact that uh, since we drafted this plan and created the the non-conformance, uh, tough luck, hit the bricks. So we went back to the drawing board and we met with Julie and we met with Ryan and we were uh, going back and forth on a number of different uh, options. And the one that made the most sense is to simply request that the 40-foot wide right-of-way be reduced by four feet to 
36 feet wide. Nothing else changes except where that uh, property line sits on the plan. The, uh, the curving, the roadway doesn't change. That's still 24 feet. Nothing changes except that the property line moves a little bit further to the west. Um, as a result of the conversations that I had with Ryan uh, in engineering, he had suggested that he wouldn't uh, oppose that, but he also wouldn't recommend that the town accept the street as a public way if that were approved. Fine, we'll keep it as a private way. So uh, that also <coughs> negated the, uh, the need for uh, certain easements, the tree planting easement, etc. Uh, I have submitted to planning uh, two easements which are going to be reviewed by engineering and also by RMLD for the water and sewer and also and a fire hydrant and uh, also the electric that you know, would have to be done anyway. So we're here today requesting that this commission uh, accept the few changes to the plan that was approved last year. Uh, I did submit a memorandum that's dated December of 2017, which... Um, I gave them the revised version. Okay, all I did is change the date, um, but the, the intent is still the same. Um, so with that, uh, I, oh, I also have, uh, Julie, if you want to have Form H. Oh, uh, yeah, that's for later. Okay. But I'll take it. Yeah, it's all signed and notarized. Yeah. Okay. Uh, Great. <laughs> so with me here today is uh, Thad Berry, our engineer, and then, uh, Bob Jamison and his son David Jamison, the property owners and developers. So with that brief outline uh, and without rehashing everything that went before for so many years, uh, I'll turn the floor over to Thad. He can answer any questions, uh, direct Julie to pull up the right page. Uh, the cross section's on the screen right now, if you're interested. But effectively, you know, the roadway doesn't change, nothing changes except where that line is on the plan. Thank you. And that's, the, that's on the south side of the, uh, of the right um, bottom of the page? The house? The, uh, the property line that's moving? The property line that's moving is actually on the westerly, I'm sorry, the easterly side of the roadway. Okay. Right. Towards the center of town. I'm sorry? Towards the center of town. <coughs> center of town? So about four miles away. <laughs> Towards it. I'll show this. Um. Okay, so, yeah, if you want to. So the, the line, which the new line which is drawn here, allows for 15.5 feet or 15.7 feet. Gets us beyond the 15 foot. We don't have to deal with the zoning board of appeals. Okay. Um, but this is all grassland, and there's a curbing here. The roadway is 24 feet wide. There'd be no parking on that side. It allows for sufficient uh, room. Fire department approved the 24 foot. Uh, DBW Engineering all put their stamp of approval on that as well. Okay. <coughs> Questions? Comments? From the board? Looks like a good answer to the problem. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, so the town just won't accept the road as a public way, but there are still some things that the town will maintain, right? I'm still said the town's going to plow it? Um, yes. Yeah, the town, so. will be, town will plow it, um, maintain, obviously, the utilities, um, water, um, sewer, uh, obviously the electrical, and all, along with the stormwater uh, fee that we have in Reading, they'll clean the catch basins. Other than cleaning the catch basins, so all other maintenance of the uh, drainage systems will be borne by the homeowners association of the of the four houses. <clears throat> okay, so how do we enforce that? <clears throat> One question. So you would give the town an easement across the right of way, but you would not require the town to manage the drainage feature that's on lot one. Correct. That's a yes. Okay. 
that was going to that was going to be the, the case regardless of whether it was a 36 foot right away or a 40 foot. Right, right. Okay. But let's say the town shows up next year and they go to clean the catch basin up, but the um, <clears throat> the basin is overgrown or um, I don't know, it's not functioning right. How do how do they enforce getting that fixed? Who do they go to? Well, they would go to the homeowners association that, that that's set up between the homeowners. Is it enforceable though? That's that's my only question, really. Well, I, I think that it would be if, because of the uh, terms of the approval of the plan. <coughs> well, the tricky thing about this is that you have a note here still on the plan showing terrain adjacent, which which points to this drainage feature on lot one. So that's a a little bit confusing. I figured that was included in the easement you were providing to the town, and I think the town engineer did as well. What do you mean by drainage easement? You have a note right in the center of the right of way, right here, that says drainage easement and points to this drainage feature. Because it, it is a drainage easement. Just not to the town. It's just not. To, it, it's a it's a drainage easement that has to be called out uh, on lot one um, to separate it from other uses of the lot. It's a drainage feature. It's an easement. Okay. Where are you granting that easement to? The easement is for the homeowners association okay. that would allow the homeowners association to make easement. And that was the town engineer's final um, understanding of that, that we would clean the catch basin and they would be responsible for all the other features? That's what he felt, <coughs> yes, because it doesn't say, like, who that easement's going to. So I think he thought it was for the town. Um, <laughs> but I think the town engineer would also be okay with what they're proposing, which is just that the town would manage, would clean the catch basins in the road and the homeowners association could manage drainage features okay. on the property. That would be fine. And, and that's exactly <coughs> the intention that's being proposed. Other comments or questions? If we're not accepting the road as a public way, why are we maintaining it on the town's cost? So collecting the taxes for everything on that site. <clears throat> the issue with not accepting it is that it's um, it bears too far from the town standards that exist right now. And is that what it was? And then the engineer yeah. didn't want to set a precedent of accepting roadways that didn't meet. The you ask a good question though, because there's a very little difference between public and private, given the amount of work the town will still do in this road. Um, what they won't do is repave it. Um, and, it, and we have that, we have a new bylaw, general bylaw, section 8.5.3, as of like a couple <coughs> town meetings ago, that allows the town to do maintenance on private ways after 10 years of a road being private but open to the public. Um, if the homeowners, a certain percentage of the homeowners that abut that road um, petition the Board of Selectmen. Um, and there's a f actually a few different ways homeowners can do that. There's three different mechanisms. Um, and so then the, then the town could come in and pave the road and do maintenance of the road, but the cost would be borne by the abutters. So basically, not accepting it means it's not factored into the capital plan. It also <coughs> is impacted by the significant fee that the owners are paying for water and sewer uh, insulation. So there, there's a lot of costs coming into the town, um, excuse me, uh, income coming into the town that's being paid by the developers to get this set up. Yeah. Yeah. Um, public comments? Um, if you choose to speak, please make sure you've signed in at least after before you leave and state your name and your address. Any comments? Uh, yes. My name is Chuck Salome. I live in Lowell Street. I just heard him today saying abutters. Are the abutters going to be just those people in the, in the new houses or are those people? I live at 374 <coughs> Lowell Street. 
which is, you know, not the house on the corner, but the next one, would that be considered an abutter and be included in this? No. So abutters who would pay for maintenance of the road would be abutters who directly abut the right of way, who get their access from the right of way. Oh, I see what you're saying. No, no, only the people who live on the road itself. Right. Yeah, it wouldn't be the, of the, road. the whole neighborhood or anything like that. Yeah. Other comments? Yes, sir. Uh, John Russell, 23 Plymouth Road. Um, is this is this the first we're hearing of it switching over to a private way? Um, I mean, this is the first discussion the CPDC has had about this. Yes. Right. Is in, is the change from public to private at all um, uh, change the uh, enforcement of the town standards in any way? Well, we accepted this development with some uh, waivers to those standards already. And are there, are there <coughs> new waivers being presented tonight? There are. Um, there's some modifications to some of the waivers that were approved when this was approved. Was that last April? Yeah. I don't remember. Um, and then there's a couple new waivers because there's some things they don't need now that it's not going to be a public way. So maybe it's good to go over those waivers because I actually, I, I, with all due respect, I don't like the way that it, this is written because it changes each one of these waivers and we really aren't changing the waivers. We're only changing a couple of the waivers that were requested and granted before. Um, and I, I, I personally would like to leave the approved waivers as they were approved. Um, the ones that I read that we really are, are modifying um, uh, with with uh, an affirmative vote, if that's what happens, is um, is reducing the right of way. We granted it from um, the, the right of way. Is, the standard is 60 feet. We um, we granted a waiver down to 40 feet. That's not the same as the road. That's the right of way. So um, and. Um, uh, now they're requesting it down to 36 feet. So that's re that's the pr primary one. Um, and then the, the other, I'm going to say, substantive one in terms of what actually gets built um, is that there won't be a 10-foot a ease, a easement granted for a tree lawn along the side of the road along the side of the, the, the road. Um, yeah, that would be outside of the right of way. Um, at, that's something that we had requested um, since we're going to go down from 60 down to 40 and it was going to be a um, town road that we wanted that area to be able to have a, to install a, a, a tree line. If it's never going to be a town road, then the town's never going to come in and plant a tree line. Can guarantee you that. Um, so that they're requesting that to be removed as a um, as a requirement. Those are really the only two. I'm going to say substantive ones in terms of what's built. The other two, the two new ones, are about the plans. What's on the detail that's on the plans? Right. Am I? Do I have that? Yes. Is that a good summary of 100% yes. correct? Yeah, that's correct. But so you're also then just saying to pull the language from the rest of them that says same as approved, but town is plant not planning. Correct. Okay, so but each one of those bullets. I was just trying to be clear. No, I am. Yeah. yeah, no, I yeah, I understand where you're going. Um, but so, okay. Other than those two bullets, the bolded language doesn't need to be there. Okay, got it. But correct me if I'm wrong, there are two new waivers being requested. There are. Yeah. And that's for the locust baths. Yeah, I'm sorry, I skipped over those. I mean, those weren't, I was answering the question about what's really going to be built. We do need to talk about those two other waivers as well. I believe I had called those out in the original definitive plan approval as things that they never addressed that they would need to address. Um, and so they're just, they were just doing that as part of this. Okay. Um, <clears throat> Does that answer your question, sir? 
Other comments, questions? All right, do we want to, um, I assume you've seen the, the um, decision? Yeah. Do we need to close the public hearing first? There's no public hearing. So, John, how do you want to edit this language? Do you want to change anything on the list of approved waivers and still have proposed waivers, but not all of these? Well, I think that <clears throat> where we're not changing the waiver, where, which she, where we only have in this draft, same as approved, but town no longer planning to adopt uh, road as public way, I don't think we need to... We don't need to reiterate the reiterate waiver. Reiterate that. Okay. I think that in the findings, um, item number two, the road will not be adopted as a public way by the town. It's good enough. Got that covered. Okay. It's there. But proposed NIP waiver number one, which reduces it from 40 to 36. Mm -hmm. And um, I think that uh, proposed waiver number four, which um, <clears throat> okay. I think we include that as it's written. <coughs> and then the, the uh, proposed waiver eight and nine. Okay. Sounds like a green number? Yeah, we green number. You want to talk about waiver number eight and number nine? Is the town engineer okay with not having these um, maps? Yeah, he didn't have any issue with it. So the, what we have here is the proposed waiver 8 and 9 are um, 3 and 4. Is this you know, something that they don't have to do, but they did have to do it previously? They, so the two waivers, that the two new waivers, um, one is having um, an aerial map on the plan set that shows all the adjacent roadways and sites um, on the plan set. Um, and then the other one is, is, is sort of doing the same thing but showing the topography. But, um, but as a waiver, this says that they don't have to do that? Well, so in the in the decision from April I had said prior to plan endorsement they either need to show all this information or seek a waiver okay. um, and so they've chosen to seek waivers so so we could say instead of the section 611b5 to provide it says no the waiver is that they're allowed to not provide it well, but this is something not be required to provide. <clears throat> not, yeah, okay. <laughs> oh, yeah, I totally worded that wrong. Yeah. Um. The, the, the waiver allows them to not provide. Oh no, well they're providing it at 1 to 100, but they're not providing it at, hold on. I'll have to. 
know that was the issue, right? Is that the scale for this that's in the subdivision bylaw doesn't really fit for a we small? Would need, we would need a entire sheet to show that type of locus. In other words, to fit that locus on the cover sheet it would be impossible at that scale. Yeah. You would need a separate sheet for, and that was that's not really. It kind of the intent of a, of a locus. Right. So we're seeking a variance on that. The other one on the topography is the fact that, <coughs> one, we did do topo a very detailed topography right. of the site, but we don't have the rights to go onto other people's property to do the topo. <coughs> and the other back end of it, we would literally be on the MBTA tracks. They would never give us permission to do that. Right. So, however, the topography that we have assumed and picked up, picked up all the critical features necessary to design the subdivision. So I think I did actually word it okay. I told, I wrote down like what they did provide, and then I said where they're supposed to provide all properties within a thousand feet and other details. Um, where they just provided adjacent sites and roadways that they were supposed to provide everything within a thousand oh, feet. Yeah. And then the second one is <coughs> kind of like similarly worded. It is a little confusing though. So if you, you put a semicolon before yeah, where? Yeah, I could do that. If you said to provide an area locus map for adjacent sites and roadways only. Right. Comma. Yeah. And then I'll do the same for the other one. Yeah, okay. So, um, when it, uh, when a house is sold uh, that's on this road, is there any notification? Is there any? I mean, the presumption of any homeowner is likely that they are going to be on a public roadway. <coughs> um, is there? Is but they have to be part of the homeowners association. I mean, how does that work? How do they know? when they, someone buys a house here, that they're on the hook for repaving this road well, in 20 years. Well, there would have to be disclosure that, that it's a private road, not a public way. Uh, that's first and foremost. Um, there would have to be, or oh, there, there would, would be? I mean, <laughs> uh, there, would, there would have to be. We, as, as a seller, we would have to disclose, uh, because in, in every... They're obliged to, in every, I guess? Well, let me put it this way. In every boilerplate PNS that I've ever seen, one of the provisions is that uh, the property be located on a public way or have access to a public way. When the title examination is done uh, by the buyer's attorney and, the, tit and the, the title insurance company takes a look at it, they're going to see this is a private way. They're going to be looking at this plan. It's going to show that it's a, private, it's a private way. So all those disclosures would be made up front uh, anyway. And they'll be given a copy of the homeowners association documents that include maintenance <coughs> of the drainage features. Mm -hmm. those same features are part of the uh, conservation commission approval as well. Right. Okay. Uh, anything else? Good. I got one. Uh, Julie, on page three under easements, you have the Epton had suggested the following with regards to drainage maintenance. Um, and that they are assuming that the catch basins located in the street will be cleaned and the roadway swept. Is that assumption correct? Does that need to be verified? I verified it today. Okay. I spoke with the town engineer at length about this. Um, so yes, that is a correct assumption. Thank you. I guess one of that same thought, <coughs> we'll point underneath it. All approved easement and drainage and maintenance language should be reviewed and approved by town council. What's the question? Can we don't skip any pieces of it? Say it again. So whatever they work out with the town engineer should also be included in this and reviewed by town council. Um, well, subject to review by town council. I mean, it, usually they review like easements and deeds and things like that. Drainage maintenance gets super gray. Can get Are we going to do that for every project that yeah, comes before the town? I'm sending everything up <coughs> to the town council. Yeah. Everything can't go there. We already overuse them. Yeah, we do, and we pay for that service. Lawyers aren't cheap. They're not inexpensive. They may or may not be cheap. 
His feet per hour is a lot cheaper than calling up the ones. <laughs> okay, um, you're okay with what we've discussed here? <laughs> yeah. A few changes? They're really just a leading language, actually. Move oh, I'm sorry. Did you have another comment? Yeah, uh, John Russell, let me throw it again. Um, with the switch over to a private way, um, especially in regards to the maintenance of the drainage features, is there, does the town lose any power in enforcing the maintenance to be done? Or is, is there, you know, when it, when it switches over to a private way and it's in the hands of the homeowners association, uh, is there any way you know, dragging a feet, so to speak, to, you know, um, does the town lose any of its power to say this has to be done and it has to be done now? I don't think so. I think we can always say that. But I think that maybe conservation has a stronger yeah. hand in this. Yes, and yes. no one's going to win over yeah. that. So. Yeah. so if something were to occur and the water starts to pile up onto the into the basements of Plymouth Road, um, the town can step in and say this has to be done and oh, it has to be done yeah. now. You know, promptly. Yeah, I would imagine conservation yeah. has a lot stronger hand too, right? And I think, right, one of those things that, that Julie just mentioned is the town enacted the ability to go in and, and make make changes um, if, at the if a at the homeowner's expense. At the homeowner's expense if if they're not um, they're not uh, addressing the issue. Um, I think that's a, that would be a long term thing, you know, if it's if it continues to happen. Um, and then the homeowners association is not being responsive, then the, the town can um, can go and make those changes. The big one, just so that everyone uh, understands the, how the drainage system works, there is one aspect of the drainage system that uh, the developer is going to fix and clean, um, but that is a town drainage system. Mm -hmm. and they're going to do it this one time. Um, and then at that point, when they do that, that any future maintenance to allow the system to work properly would be borne by, would be backborne by the, by the town. Is that the ditch that you're cleaning out? Yeah, the ditch. We're cleaning out the ditch. We're in removing all the silt and all the trash. We're cleaning a, a clogged drainage pipe uh, culvert near the um, railroad tracks. We're raking out all the leaves. Um, we're installing a velocity reducer for 129 drainage. Um, so, those things are the drain system of the town, like most towns, have us maintained. Not because they they're bad, it's because right, yeah. it's just. But we're gonna we're gonna do that once, <coughs> and then at that point it will fall back onto the, the town. Yep. <coughs> yeah. okay. Move that the CPDC approve the minor modification to the approved. Definitive plan for Lionel Estates at 364 Lowell Street as amended. So a second. Second. All in favor? Opposed? Oops, I don't get to vote anymore, remember? <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Thank you all. Thank you very much. Um, yeah, if you want to come in tomorrow, I can give it to you. I'll probably sign them up. Sure. <coughs> Minor amendment for the PUD special permit at Johnson Woods. Okay. Is this still on our agenda or? Yes. Okay. Well, part of it, anyways. Yes, sir. Sure. My name is Brad Latham, and I have uh, Ted more with me this evening. Um, I'd like to start off, if I could, to try and change the direction a little bit, maybe the tenor of what's transpired here. Uh, we acknowledge that there are certain uh, errors made 
Uh, one with reference to where the foundation is on one of the structures uh, that's been stopped and that nothing further can happen until the building permit issues. Second is that Ted, in his effort to create more parking and proximity to the uh, garden style buildings, did make the parking spaces too narrow, eight and a half, eight feet. We're looking to address those issues. Uh, with reference to the parking space width, we had discussion last time uh, that we would propose to post a bond, uh, a cash bond, uh, have that done by June 1st as far as the restriping is concerned. And in the package I sent you, we actually have a quote, uh, I think it's $1,250 from an independent uh, contractor to do that restriping. To the extent that requires any blackening out of lines, that would be done as well. So that's an important issue both from your perspective and also the building permit uh, for the building at 16 has been held up as a consequence of that. Uh, Ted gave the town a uh, application fee for the building permit of about $81,000. The check's been cashed. He's going to lose contractors who are scheduled to do the work in this site and he's got a significant amount of money invested in the foundation itself. So we ask if you would consider uh, a practical solution to this uh, to let us go forward uh, with the construction uh, on the property. But that's the background for how those spaces became painted, what we believe is a practical solution to that particular problem. Uh, the second item is uh, on buildings 51, 52. Uh, I, I think you've seen that by agreement between myself and council for the abutter, uh, we've agreed to put it over. The abutter happens to be away. Uh, we're still trying to work with that abutter to find a solution. We think we can do it. Um, so we've asked to put that over. It's a separate issue. Even though it's the same uh, acreage site, it's a totally different issue from that with reference to that Building 16 and its building permit. Next item is on the landscaping. I know that there was concern with uh, <clears throat> having more detail as far as landscaping. And one thing about landscaping is when it's there, you can see it. Uh, and it's not something that's going to change. Uh, but significant amount of money has been invested in the landscaping on the site. I think you've seen the site. It's very attractive. I went through there recently with Ted to look at it. Um, and so we gave you what we tried to show as a landscaping plan with specific exhibits blowing up certain sections to show what's been done as an example in the park area and around two of the garden style buildings that are existing. Can I uh, make a quick interruption? So that packet that I gave you tonight was received by my office at 4.50 p.m. on Thursday. It should not be discussed tonight. I haven't even looked at it. So please put it away. This is to read. I gave it to you All right. to look at for next time, and I put so a note on it. So what is... What's Par the parking situation at the multifamily just, buildings. You just gave yes. us this one decision. I gave you the other one so you could see how they're right. intertwined, right. but you're not. I don't think right. you should be discussing that packet of information. Okay. I haven't even Thank looked you. at it. So. The concern that exists and isn't really, I suppose, a CPDC issue is that the building permit is being held up. As I understand it, the issue before CPDC on, on the building permit relates to the parking width. So that's the main item we'd like to get resolved. And as they say, they, I, I heard discussion of linking the two, that is the improper location of a foundation and the parking width on uh, 16, uh, oh, excuse me, 39 and 30. Uh, and you have ample power over the uh, issue of the foundation by virtue of nothing can take place there till the building permit is issued. So that's, that's its own policing mechanism by itself. Uh, those are the major issues that, that we'd like to go over. Um, if we don't want to discuss landscaping, then uh, uh, as long as it doesn't, as long as we can resolve that with the, with planning staff, uh, then that could be a separate issue. Uh, so it doesn't hold up the building permit. Uh, last thing I'd like to touch upon is at the last meeting there was discussion regarding building six and a garage in front of or aside building six. Uh, Bill Bergeron and I were not familiar with the background of that. Um, basically, I had been briefed on that. I did include a copy of uh, some information, a statement that was provided regarding the history of that, and also a plan showing a potential location of that garage. If, if that's, that's also in the same package, so if you want to defer that to another time, that's certainly fine with us. Um, uh, the major issue is to make sure we try and resolve the parking with issue today. Excuse me, 
part of what you just received this evening, Julie, for the garage thing too? Yeah, it came in on Thursday. But I haven't, have not had a chance to look at it. So. And so all these documents I prepared were written without the benefit of any of this information. So. Okay. I'm getting confused here. Sorry, I put a note on it so you wouldn't open it, but I failed somehow. Oh, that was just for that one time. Sorry. <laughs> yeah. I, I want to say something about landscaping. Julie, Julie has been out to look at Taylor Park. Yeah, which has been landscaped for a year. And I believe she said the Bill Burris run, park looks fine. I was in building 30 with Julie and Jean prior to us getting our first CO there. They looked at the common area and the landscaping. They were satisfied. We got COs. Prior to that, I was at building 39 with Julie like three years ago looking at the landscaping. She was happy that it complied. We got COs for that building. So the only, so those three areas, not only did we finish the landscaping going years back, but they have been inspected by either Jane or Julie and found acceptable to issue COs with. So we've, I've now put back in the history and provided to the board <coughs> nine, the 950 plants we planted in phase two. And with most cases showing, they're in place, but in most cases showing the plan they came from. So, because we've also planted around four to five buildings in Green Meadow Drive. And it's the same plan that we've done for 14 years at, at Johnson Woods. The same architect, the same landscape architect, Weston Nurseries, the same supplier, the same installer, the same. Phase, phase two, to date, we've spent $130,000 on landscaping between buying the plants and installing them. They've been there for anywhere from six months to three or four years. And I don't think anyone, I've never heard a complaint about what we can solve. I don't even know why we're talking about landscaping, to be honest. I'm I thought the landscaping issue only came up because you submitted plans to us that showed landscaping that we knew didn't match <laughs> and tree cover that didn't match. It, the landscaping plan was like 10 years old oh, three, and that that was the issue yeah. so I, I it's not that. what you're doing it's that you're giving us plans that are inconsistent okay, so now with what now what we're actually what plans that are actually so, what we plan okay. okay. well, I think that's, that's the, the issue I think all they wanted was the update plan yeah, yeah. I agree mean, that to our mind, landscaping was even part of the issue before you. Right. We don't want plans that aren't up to date. It doesn't help. It doesn't right. keep. But I, but it doesn't keep, keep things. Um, unfortunately, clear. as I said earlier, I can't fit nine. I can't take a plan that's three feet by two feet and make 950 notations on it about what got planted where. There's not room on the plan to do that. And I think I pointed that out. The one, the Taylor Park that we submitted, was in color. Was four times larger and the big plan, and it doesn't even allow you to put every single plant. There's, there were 221 plants put in Taylor Park. You can't, you can't get to them. Yeah, that wasn't what we, that wasn't the level. So, no, I understand. I'm, I'm, I'm just saying, I don't know how. I don't want to get into that either, but that's not how you do landscaping plans. Right. You draw a big cloud and you say, 14 hour vital. That's all you have to do. It's not like you have to draw every single one. You don't draw every pinpoint of a plant, only the big caliper stuff. The, the vast, number of plants are usually just some sort of clouded area that says 42 plants. <coughs> well, yeah, I mean, so that's I'm proud of what we've done there. I think if your landscaping good. architect is charging you for more than that, then you're getting ripped off. <coughs> so we're not discussing planting here. Um, let's discuss this parking um, here. Um, yeah, we, we got um, an email distribution today or about the, uh, with the photos? That was a while ago, like a, right after the last meeting. There was a, a couple photos sent showing that if they put in those two extra spaces down off the access road, um, they may need to regrade and take out some trees. Um, and so I just forwarded that to you for consideration. Okay. I can pull it up. <laughs> Talked about the parking, and it seemed to be a reasonable 
approach. But then something that the challenge here was fitting them the new new spaces into where they were pro pro proposed to be. I think in that picture, I'm, I'm having trouble hearing. I wish there were microphones in the room for those of us that are over 60. <coughs> And contribute there's a little more tax that, money to the town and maybe we can get them in, <laughs> installed. <laughs> there's six spaces in that uh, picture and they're only, they're, they need to be, it needs to be three feet wider to make them all nine footers. And so the plan, Bill's plan shows adding some either hot top or grass street to the left side of that picture so that those six spaces are all nine feet. So nine, nine times six is 54. Yeah, versus. Right. 52 okay. or whatever it is today. That's how much space we had. We were able to divide it into six spaces. People would like them to be a little wider, so we're happy to keep six spaces, but we need a little more. We need to make the, the width a little bit wider to make that happen. A little more pavement, yeah. Yes, or yeah. grass paving, whatever you grass, uh, The grass pavers, right? Grass yeah. pavers are fine, whatever you'd like. So on the left there, that would go to the left of that last spot? Sort yeah. of between there and this snow? Right there. Okay. Yeah. So why do you why do we think we need to lose trees? Right. It's just that uh, Butter had sent this picture, so I forwarded it to you guys. Yeah. I'm not really sure the trees are going to have to be removed looking at this. Yeah, to be honest. Well, I think the the the, um, <clears throat> the disconnect was that is a plan that was pro shown during the last meeting showed four showed. Um, less pavement than what you actually built out there and showed four, four nine, nine foot wide spots. Um, but what actually got built out there was six. enough for six, eight, eight or eight, eight and a half foot spots. So on the plan it showed two completely new spaces. When it, what actually needs to be built is another four feet. Right because what was built was not what was shown on the plan. <coughs> oh, I think that's yes. correct. Which is what caused the confusion. Right. Yeah, it, it's, <coughs> this afternoon I took a, a drive through the entire property, and basically every street, the whole thing. Uh, it looks wonderful. Thank you. But I did verify that the, the photo shows the that you is a substantial drop off if you needed more than the four feet. If we, if we had to, we could add a foot to the right and three to the left. To, you know. Yeah. But that's it's the issue of the. The old plan versus the uh, actual, the as built, has been something hard to keep up with. Yeah. The, my point again. I agree. Your engineer showed us a plan in, in in a meeting that was a month ago that was showing what wasn't built. To, how many years ago? I, how long ago was that? that built? Was two, or, two or three yeah, years ago. That's, yeah. That's. That's, that's like, that was like 14 or 15. Yeah, so that's the that's the problem that we continually have. Well, so one, one of the things that, that I have to, you know, a lot of the, you know, a lot of the walls and landscaping is done, you know, when after the building gets built, we figure out where to put a retaining wall, we need one, where to hide foundation, where we can we landscape. It's done rather than doing it on a two-dimensional plan from somebody who doesn't spend any time on site. I'm there three days a week, and I lay out every single stone, every stone wall you saw on the, Every stone wall on that property, I've laid out with my mason by myself, putting you know, putting stakes, putting a grade thing, trying to deal with the actual conditions that we see on site. Um, and there, you know, and there, the original Hayes plan was done with a satellite two-foot topo with a bunch of trees, and it was in a lot of places off by two feet. You know, it was, it was supposedly two feet, but it really was. It was done in you know, 2002, and we've been out there 16 years working with what's actually on site and it's, there's little differences but they when you get to a foundation two feet makes it you know two feet makes a big difference you know height wise <clears throat> all right so um you so, said I, you know, so we're not i don't build from a two you know three-dimensional piece of paper we actually 
you know, walk around with our boots on and try to figure out where to, where to put a little wall to not be too high to need a railing and where to make it, where to hide a foundation and where we can landscape. Um, so you've seen this decision that Julie prepared? The draft decision? Have you seen the draft? Yes. Draft decision? Sorry. Um, I guess my question to the, to the board and staff is a recollection that we we said that if these conditions were met, we would approve the permit. Because that's the idea here, right? Which conditions and what permit? Well, uh, for parking. We're only talking about parking. Right. We're only talking about parking at the at the uh, apartment building. Is that what you guys recall? Yeah. Does my do my conditions match what you recall from last yeah. time's discussion? It was very convoluted, and I didn't take the best notes. Um, Can you just, sorry, the first condition here, that the Taylor Drive is conditional on White Elks Lane, which is, I think, in the other draft decision. Is that correct? Mm -hmm. Okay. So when we approve today, we are not actually, or if, we, if we have a vote on this today, mm -hmm. We're not actually finishing it because of that condition. Well, yeah, because the minor modification includes both the parking and the foundation, and I don't want to separate them entirely Understood. from each That's other. That's what I was trying to understand. Right. Is those they're connected right. regardless of what happens on this? Right. That's mm -hmm. yes. It's a to be continued on. <laughs> so, did you see that condition? No, no. That, that's that's obviously the problem. Uh, we understood that there was an issue with the parking. We're trying to address that, and that's all we're asking the board to address. We're acknowledging that the foundation is going to be resolved, but part of the comment that was made at the beginning was you'd lose leverage if you approve this. But I think as has been accurately noted by the board members themselves, you have all kinds of leverage over that foundation. Nothing can happen to it uh, until it's been rectified and agreed upon by both the, the parties involved and by the board itself. So. This condition number one, uh, in essence, doesn't resolve anything. It just says, well, we'll go through the process and, yeah, you can do this, but you can't really do anything. You can't build this 16 Taylor <coughs> until you, in essence, resolve the foundation's got nothing to do with 16 Taylor. <coughs> so we, we, we do have concern with condition number one as being unacceptable. I had a note in my, I had a note in my notes from the last meeting that said, very clearly withhold all building permits for 16 Taylor Drive until minor modification is closed out. And I, Jean, do you remember? Yep, I do. That's okay. Absolutely right. I thought that's that's what. No, what's it? You captured that right. Okay. <laughs> what else is going on on site? Are you building elsewhere, or are you just focusing on 16? Um, building 16, we. We you know, did a pre blast survey a year ago. Did extensive, you know, we had to remove, you know, I don't know how many, you know, thousand yards of ledge. It put a foundation in, and the steel, the steel erector is ready to drop the steel columns onto the footings in the foundation. And we uh, tendered a check to the town in December for $81,000, which they negotiated on December 22nd. And we've been waiting two months to be able to proceed with putting the steel into that particular building. And, and, and I have, I have, we received a an email from the from the planning department back in August saying we've inspected your tree protection, we've inspected the site. There's two things we'd like to see: we'd like to have an updated landscape plan, we'd like the width of the parking spaces in phase two addressed, which we think we've addressed. It had nothing to do with. That building permit had nothing to do with anything else. And it's, you know, it's a separate phase, different, I want, you know, different situation to resolve. They should. Um, Mr. Chair, if I could just clarify the time frame, um, just so everybody's very clear about what happened. We did email back in August the concern, as uh, Ted has stated, but we never received the landscaping engineers for several months. So let's just be clear about the time frame. Thank you. So is, I guess as, as Nick asked, is that the only construction going on on the site? 
which isn't happening right now, right? And no, we, so we're, we're, we, are, we are finishing building, so building 69, 72, 73, and 51 have been framed, tight to the weather. Uh, somebody's moved into building 73. We're in the process of nearing stages of doing what I call MEPs in those four buildings, seven units. Um, and then building 16, which is a 37 unit building containing seven affordable units is what we're waiting. We've signed a contract. Steel has been manufactured. The steel contractors waiting to, you know, drop, show up with the train and put the steel in the field. I'm trying to understand where we need this leverage. I'm trying to understand what it is that we are still missing. So there's some buildings that are under construction that will require occupancy permits at some point. Right? They aren't finished. Mm -hmm. My hearing's bad and you, you're soft spoken. So I know, I'm sorry, my throat's really sore today. Um, so there are several buildings that are under construction that will eventually require occupancy permits. Right. Final inspections. There are two, four, six, seven units. Seven units, okay. Um, and obviously six and eight. The foundation issue can't go forward until you come back. The foundation is done. They no, said. No, I'm sorry. The six and eight White, Oak, White Oaks Lane. We have a foundation permit. We've built a foundation. The next step is to get a building permit, which we applied. We said, you know, we satisfied the submissions required back in December, and we are waiting to now put steel in, which is the first part of the actual building. That's mm -hmm. sixteen, isn't it? That's sixteen mm -hmm. Taylor. Right. Yeah, but the, building the misplaced foundation issue. There's nothing to do. Six, on hold. Sixteen is where it's supposed to be. Right. Nothing so they to can't do. Can't go forward with that. No. We're not going forward with that. Not until they come to some sort of resolution. Right. Do we have an updated landscaping plan now. Yes. And every tree receipt. <laughs> Apparently. So what else do we need from them besides fixing the parking? What, what is it that we still well, So need? they think that the fact that there's a buyer who's aggrieved and a neighbor who's aggrieved is going to put pressure on for them to continue with this minor modification process for the foundation. But I don't really feel confident that they care whether they aggrieve people at this property for however long it takes. So That's you think they just leave the foundation as is and not move forward? I'm not really sure. Um, I guess what's that yeah. impact to us? It, it does. It, it doesn't. I mean, I, I, I guess I'm um, of the opinion that these are separate issues. Mm -hmm. Although I, you know, if, if they were, if if this was all in, I'm going to call it in the same neighborhood of the, uh, then that would be one thing. But these are in separate parts of the the development. Um, I, I'm not sure there's really a, a tie-in between the two that I'm comfortable making. Um, I'll just leave it at that. Um, well, uh, I think that we should separate the two issues uh, because there's a dramatic difference in scale for the, uh, the work involved. Yes, we want to, to maintain some leverage about the smaller uh, issues, but the build, build 16 Taylor Drive, which is building 66, is a major uh, major work that should be allowed to continue, I believe. As long as there's nothing else open or major I would agree with that that's why I was asking you what is it that we still are still owed you know, also last time you guys sort of circled around this and like at the end of the day I thought decided we'd withhold all the building permits for 16 Taylor Drive until we solve these problems so I mean I, I don't I struggled with how to write these <laughs> I start I separated them as you see and then at the end felt like I shouldn't have and so Really, I'll, I'll go either way you want. I just, I'm not really sure what's best. See, you're of the opinion that this, this won't actually go anywhere? 
I don't know. I, I, no if, I, I don't know. I really don't. That would be my concern. <laughs> I guess to me, these are these. This is all one related sets of issues: the so parking and um, 16 Taylor Drive, and getting all that sort of. That's one set of issues. Um, I, I I just can't uh, um, leverage aside and and everything. I can't see lumping in the other set of issues that are going to have to be addressed at some point. At some point, um, I don't. I'm going to guess he doesn't mm -hmm. want to. That no one wants a, you know, a foundation sitting there for forever. Uh, but you know, it's happened. And it's, uh, yeah, I, I really struggled with how to do this. I wasn't sure, like, what the best way to, because I don't want to hold up a productive development. You know, that's not really my inclination. But you know, I'm hearing from people who live here every week, so. I know, the initial complaint Stop. at 16, though, was, was associated with the way the parking was laid out okay. in that area. So if we fix that, we've addressed that part of it. Mm -hmm. And then we've talked about fixing all of the issues done by 68 Oak, including, sorry, <laughs> we've talked about making sure that you do the planning for that whole other neighborhood there, um, you know, where the garage goes and all of that, coming back with some sort of master plan correction for all of that not just the foundation resolution. So I think if we, if we agree to that, then I'm okay with um, separating this. Well, so that stuff is in the second decision that right. I wrote, where I asked them to come in with a comprehensive plan of all the ripple effects of these right. small changes and any dreamed about changes that we don't know about. <laughs> um, um, so. And also a plan for the utility building. Or at least a, for the accessory building. There's a there's a building yeah. that's on site that was there. Uh, the shed that you're using for maintenance or construction. The shed that you're yeah. using for maintenance or construction. <laughs> the, the, you know the barn that was there in 2001 yeah. and it stayed there ever since. We will eventually get rid of that. Okay. Yeah, of course we got to. You know we're this has been. I've been at this 17 years. Yeah. We'll wrap it up. <laughs> I'm doing my best. It's 300 houses. It's more than that. It's the biggest development, I, I believe, by a factor of something that's ever occurred in Reading. And no, Reading Woods is 424 Army. units. Reading Woods has 424 units. I, 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 Reading Woods isn't 40 acres, though. No, 27. 26. 27. No, it is 26. 26 yeah. and change. Yep. They're, they're a big corporation with no trees on the site to stop it. We, we, were, we, we bought a farm. No, they they a actually kept quite a few. They just did a crappy job on the roofs. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay, so <clears throat> then the, uh, the applicant has proposed deleting condition number one here. Yes. I, I approve of the deletion. Um, you said they already provided you, Julie, with uh, evidence of the contract? I think so. I think it was in that pile. I'll, I'll swear it was in the package. I have another copy if you want it now. No, no, I just I want it. Julie to have it at some point. I'll look at that stuff I eventually. I through, I saw some. <laughs> yeah. 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 Which one's that? I also prepared a bond and I was going to give to you. What are the what are the conditions for the release of the bond when the lines were down? How do we go about that? Um, we'll inspect and then we'll sign off and release it. Okay. So we'll give you a call, have you come out and look at the lines? Good. Okay. Perfect. Yes, then we'll come out with a measuring tape. Okay. <laughs> I'll provide one for you. No, we'll bring our own. <laughs> <laughs> make sure it's make sure it's the right scale. <coughs> okay. Any other comments? No. Uh, public comments on the uh, parking? 
Um, I'm a resident of 30 Taylor Drive. I'm actually your name? pleased that you're doing Sorry, could I have your name? Oh, I'm sorry. Beth Moshe, 30 Taylor Drive. I face 16 Taylor Drive, so I'm kind of excited at the fact that you're separating the situation because I understand that we need to get everything straightened out. However, we also have to consider the people in 30 Drive that face the construction site, so we'd like that to move ahead. I'm thrilled that you're trying to make everything right in the development. I think that's great work. And I'm thrilled that you're also considering moving along 16. I want to thank you for doing that. I do have a question, though. I read notes that were put out publicly from the last meeting. And regarding the parking plan, they talked about in the note that two um, extra spaces be added to compensate for the lost parking. Do we know where those are going to be placed? They're up, they're up on the Yes. <coughs> yeah, what's the name of that section okay. of the road? Um, it was the street. <coughs> Is it the one we're talking about right here? Taylor Drive. It's like an access drive, and then yeah. there, this is like the gate that goes to okay, that yeah, site. No, yeah. yeah, so it's it's going to just be a little bit of added pavement on the edge here, and then the whole thing restriped to accommodate six spaces that are nine feet wide. Okay, so that's not two additional spaces. Just not just in addition to what you're seeing right here. Okay, no. and then no changes in the front of either 30 or 39 Taylor to widen those as well? Those will be widened. They'll all be widened to nine feet. So will we lose some spaces there, and is those the two additional that this refers to? Because I downloaded um, this from the so it's, Right, so, so in effect, because this is different than what we talked about last time, there aren't going to be, we, you're going to lose two spaces in total from what's out there right now. It's adding two from what was originally approved. I see. Okay. But in total, it's going to lose yeah. two right. surface spots. In fact, there's two in front of the building that weren't approved, and they're going to get shifted down to the two. The, yeah. yeah. Thank you. So that may be a little bit different than what's said in the notes last time, because yeah. it was. Uh, well, that that was those part. notes, the, the notes from the last meeting, haven't been released, so I don't know where those notes are oh. from. They were actually sent to me from somebody else within the okay. town government uh -huh. that knew I'd be interested because right. I was facing sixteen okay. Taylor. So if you go on the town's website under CPDC, there's links to tonight's meeting documents, and there's this decision that's on the screen that that outlines exactly what's going to happen in front of thirty nine and thirty to the drive. Thank you, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. and thank you for your work. I really <coughs> not saying much that's appreciated as well. Um, okay. Going forward, do we want to always include the building number as well as the address yes. so that we can actually correlate things to the yes, plans? Yes, please. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. so, 15 Taylor's building 66, right? You want me to add yeah. that to... Yeah. Uh, you can add it to this one. I think that might help. Yeah, I'll add it. So I'll just add it wherever I mention the building, <laughs> the address. Um, So 66 is 16 Taylor Drive? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think so. Okay. Okay. Building 66, but 16 Taylor Drive, yeah. <laughs> okay, I don't have any other comments on this. Do we think that this is worded correctly? That we, we feel that this reflects what John actually summarized? <laughs> I think so. Yeah. I'm just looking to make sure nobody has comments on parking. Okay. Move that the CPDC approve the minor amendment to the PUD special permit for Johnson Woods um, as amended. Or second. Second. All in favor? And then you guys need to pick a date to continue the discussion on the foundation. Did you have a like meeting in mind? Uh, I would think two weeks would be fine. As I said, the uh, butter is away. Um, 
we're going to try and meet and uh, discuss some ideas as to how to perhaps uh, address some of his concerns. So I think two weeks would be adequate. Be back before you and hopefully we'll be we have a meeting in two weeks? Uh, on the 12th, on March 12th. Is that the only March meeting? No, there's no. We have two in March. One. April. April. Starts in April. No. Um, and they can be at 7:30 on the 12th. Okay. Okay. Can we move? Move to uh, continue this to. Well, it hasn't. It wasn't on the agenda. Yeah. So I don't think we have to. So we just have to schedule it then. We don't continue it. Right. Just schedule it. All right. Just schedule it's, it. It's really so March 12th at 7.30 for a conversation on the foundation, the way to explain, and various other concerns. So the planning elements of that neighborhood. Yes. Um, I wondered if it was okay if I asked a question um, regarding the decision. Um, the parking decision? The, no, not on the parking decision, on um, the draft decision that we have um, with regards to the garage and um, clarification on the word feasible location for a one car detached garage. And it's my understanding from the minutes that um, your direction was for us, what was for um, Mr. Moore to provide to the planning commission a location that was um, one of mutual agreement. I think that would be good if you provided something like that. Thank you. We'll look at those when we come back. I still can't hear you. They're discussing the um, one car garage issue. Yes. Okay, so we, Bill, after the last meeting, mm -hmm. uh, Bill Bergeron listened to the concerns of the board about not wanting any foundation to be elevated in the air and not wanting to remove the. There's eight, eight different clumps, there's eight different trees or clumps of trees on the top of the hill there that shelter the front yard and Bill, Bill drafted and submitted a plan to the town that shows the garage located to the front side the front side of the house that only requires the removal of one set one that, tree. that wasn't how we left it with Bill we, I mean, that's not what we left that's not how we left it with Bill what we told him was that it required some thinking because there was a significant grade drop off and there were trees to consider right. That's all we said. We didn't okay. say don't so, take so it away. So he's come up with a plan that dealt with the grade where the garage is built on level. Uh, there's a garage built in the 20-foot setback on the level, so there's no foundation exposed, and it would leave seven of the eight sets of trees, existing trees that we had planted. Those trees were well planted by by us, you know, in years past. It would live, allow us to keep seven of those eight sets of trees, not touch the berm in front, and basically hide the garage from. The vista coming up the hill and driving by, using the current using the current driveway entrance to get into the garage, providing a garage and an additional parking spot. So there would, there would end up being two interior garage spaces and two exterior pad spaces for a total of four cars. So he provided he, he provided a draft plan, um, which was submitted last week, showing where that garage might be located. Okay, but we haven't seen it, so make sure you're, you have need options be, if you need them. Need to schedule the. Okay. To schedule so should we take take that up again on March 12th? Yeah. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay. Yeah. So the clarification that I was seeking is is with regards to the word feasible and the intention of Mr. Spina. My understanding was that the location that was proposed should be one of mutual agreement between Mr. Moore and myself not a location that the commission has reviewed which is essentially in my front yard and has been submitted well we're, we're not really supposed to be having this discussion i don't think because we haven't opened okay. this but 
The only thing I, I will just say that on, on what does the word feasible mean and whether or not <coughs> it should be a mutual, it should be a location that's mutually agreeable or or not, so that we don't waste the commission's time reviewing information. If it's if it's we've actually had the conversation at the planning commission. I understand. Um, I ha again, I haven't looked at the plan because I haven't seen it. Um, but I, I think we told Bill to come up with some options, including across the street. Mm -hmm. um, so if you've only proposed one thing, and it's you know, if I have to go through the garage so to get into the front door, I don't know if that's going to. When I when I met when I met with Mary Beth seven years ago, it said we might be able to we might. Yeah. 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 We, we can't have this conversation. I, I think, we, we really can't. I think the goal is probably <coughs> mutually agreeable. I agree. I right. agree. Yeah. Yeah. I don't want to be having the same discussion. I agree. Um, that's, yeah. that's my only clarification. Thank you. <coughs> All right. Um, Next up is a um, modification to the four-year plan approval. A waiver from section 10.5 of 50 Union Street. Hi, everybody. Thank you, Julie, for adding us to the schedule, and thank you for the board for <clears throat> letting me letting me come in front of you. So I'm um, Caroline Gautier. I'm the owner of Reading Foot and Ankle Specialist. I actually live at 76 Washington Street in Reading, and I'm here today with um, with uh, Stefan uh, Zilish, my broker, my office manager, Jennifer Driscoll, and Leo Villalua. I'm um, uh, 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 the landlord of um, uh, 50 Avon Street. So I'm here in front of you um, requesting a, a waiver uh, that would allow office use to be greater than 33% of the total square footage of the ground floor at 50 Avon Street. Um, so um, my practice is a Reading Foot and Ankle Specialist, and uh, the practice has been established in Reading for more than 40 years. I actually took over the practice uh, a little less than three years ago. The practice is currently located on Ash Street and has been established there for all the 40 years that the practice has been um, in business. Um, so I took over um, the practice and after a year of business I actually outgrew the space and I've been looking for a new space to expand the practice. Um, the practice has been extremely busy. Um, we provide a foot and ankle um, care, um, which is what a podiatrist does, uh, and I'm uh, trained in foot and ankle surgery as well. Um, so uh, I provide specialist care and um, I want to keep the my patient and the resident of Reading walking. Um, I looked at the data and over the past two years I actually have seen 3,000 patient visit of only patient of Reading with the 01867 uh, zip code. Um, I've uh, treated patients of many local families and some families actually have seen uh, three generations of patients. The 90 year old um, grandmother with a circulation issue that I need to see every eight weeks. I see a 60 year old um, daughter that has actually broke her ankle and then the 30 year old granddaughter who needed to have foot surgery. So um, the practice has and continues to have a great impact to the town of Reading. Um, the practice currently employs um, five employees. I'm the owner and I live in Reading and three other employees are long life um, resident of Reading. Um, the hope with um, this expansion and the move of my practice is I can actually offer to Reading more employment opportunities and I hope to employ two full-time employees by expanding the practice and being able to move it to a bigger space. Uh, so the, I've been looking for a new space to move my practice for about a year and a half and the criteria are that I'm on the ground level adjacent to a parking spot, have um, a, a handicap accessible um, location and also ideally accessible to commuters which is what I have right now but just not enough square footage. 
I cannot actually expand where I'm at currently. There's no possibility of square footage expansion, so that's why we've looked at different uh, uh, options. So um, when I took over the practice, I named the practice Reading Foot Nickel Specialist because my heart is set on Reading. And um, I uh, realized that 50 Even Street was available and was the perfect location because it met all the different criteria that I just mentioned. So um, I'm here in front of you to uh, request a waiver since the current office use right now is almost 33% and by taking over that space, we would exceed the current requirement. Thank you. Julie, how come the tenant has to come to us and not the property owner? The property owner has given authorization for this. Um, that's okay. It's just common. It is, yeah. It's pretty common, yeah. Okay. <laughs> Although the property owner has a, a representative here as well. Okay. In case we said something like, you know, take down 50 feet of the wall, wall or right. something. <laughs> mm -hmm. Good argue. Um, okay. Uh, thoughts on this one? Well, my first thought is the map that we have is not the gross area. This looks more like the net. Does the gross area be the, the actual width by length, not each individual part portion. It's... But in the decision, in the draft decision, you total it out. Right. Okay. Well, these are the, these are the, like, I don't know. I don't know. within the building. Right, and then the common spaces are added as well. So even the white spaces are included? Correct. So each piece of this owns a piece of the common area. I, right. I do have an updated plan that came to me a little later that shows the same space and the common areas are marked. So I don't know if you want to see this right now or... Well, later. my point is that the gross area is nothing more than the, the length of the front divided by times the width. Right, so they told me that they didn't have exact square footages for all the spaces, but the, so the total at the top is the gross area, and then like when I deducted all these out, I was left with like approximately four thousand square feet that comprise these other spaces that are like okay. common spaces. So the gross area of twenty six is not a calculation that from here it's what the applicant is saying. No, it's, it's the outside. The it's 26 the, it's is like the, the outside. outside walls in. Yeah. 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 This is considered a loss here. factor when you do square footage. Yeah. If, if you look here, mm -hmm. it includes the area of the, the common mm -hmm. interior spaces. Right. It adds up to that. Okay. I didn't know if there was a little leeway here that when you add these together, it looks like, I don't know, elevators maybe and bathrooms and so forth weren't included. Well, I told them that they it's to their benefit to include all, everything because we're talking about a percentage of gross square footage. Right. So, I mean, I... Okay. So, so the 26,726 number is the number we have to work with. That's the presumption that I'm under, yes. That's correct. Okay. Yes. Okay. But if that number were higher, this might not it be would, an issue. It would help them. So yes. Yes. And her okay. rent will go up because it increases that square footage. Right. <laughs> <laughs> so can you um can you talk about the street door not being a front door or a Yeah, so um my assumption is that um, most of my patients will be parking in the back parking area. Um and um I'm trying to limit the amount of distance that patients have to walk with foot pain or after surgery or with a walker. And so being able to have a side door like um, the dentist did, uh, they actually created a, a door that would kind of divide the distance between the front and the back would allow uh, patients to kind of walk, come in with less of a distance um, and make this an handicap electrical door. Um, to try to limit traffic of um, two doors and having to um, check in patient that would make it easier for us to have that door more of an exit only, keep all the, the, the glass 
open um, so that it brings light and it meets the requirement of you know for the pedestrian to see inside but um, I would keep it more as an emergency door and then you know have everybody come into that side door um, for either. so I have a lot of concerns about this and I am learning that the dentist mm -hmm. entry is in the back kind of adds to my concerns and these clearly these guidelines were set so that the street would be activated and taking a huge what used to be a very active site turning it into a dentist's office taking everyone off of the street and having them come in through the parking lot and then taking the last remaining parcel and turning that so that all of the foot traffic goes through the back. I just, I have pretty big concerns. I, um, if there was a way to accommodate you as a tenant, I think you are the perfect tenant for this. If one of the other developments were up already and other street traffic was going on. I just, what I see happening quickly is Pamplemousse will close. Mm -hmm. There will be no street traffic. There's no foot traffic at that point, other than way at the front. Nobody's coming up. There will be no activation in that whole block between those two points if everyone's coming in from that entire point in time. We've got a couple people coming in mostly on Saturdays for the karate. But this is, you extensively created a dead block by doing this and I'm pretty big concerns on that. Well, I, I had a similar concern. I'm not sure from your description. I wasn't sure where on this diagram the primary door would be. Well, the, um, the, the door between the available space and the dentist is signed as 52 Avon Street. So, um, so people could walk to the street through that door and then there would be a door on the side of the, of the building, almost in front of where the dentist door is, you know. So that's along the long wall of the, the corridor between the dentist and the available suite. Okay, so you'd be using the, the double door, which is on Haven Street, yeah. as the primary entrance. Yeah, from the and front office, yeah. Or the front office. So the this one or this one? The one on Haven She's Street. talking about this one right here, <coughs> Rachel, where my cursor yeah. is. So this would be the main entrance, and then you'd have to put a door in somewhere yeah. in here. Or probably a little further towards the back, but yeah. But you're still anticipating that most of your clients are going to park in the lot in the back? For the one using a car, just because it's so limited on Avon Street, but the hope is people could walk in uh, and from Avon Street, but the parking is still pretty limited on Avon Street during a busy... You know. What are the... Do you, Jean, do you know what the restrictions are along here for parking? Is it half an hour? Two hour? Um... Not posted. Which one's the handicap usually, usually the default load is six to two hours. This is not the dentist center? There might As be a couple of short Certainly not. You want to think about that. Okay. They have two entrances. They do. Yeah. yeah. I mean, a, so do you have a layout for the space? I could have, you, have, have you thought about what it looks like? We uh, started doing a layout. I can give you the big ideas, but when the zoning issue came about, I stopped any further planning until we could come in front of you. But the space that I need is I'd like to have uh, a reception area in the front uh, and uh, a waiting area in the front of the building, and then have four treatment rooms that would divide almost maybe half the suite will have a wall to have the, the treatment room behind it but keep the reception and the waiting area facing Avon Street. And then the office staff space in my office would be behind the treatment room more towards the back of the of the suite. Towards and the back door. My concern, I have the same concern concern, I mean personally nothing with you, but it's a shame, but I think it's the reality that um, that that the we can't get more um, retail tenants in here. Not you know that that's not your issue. Um, I think that's more of a Reading issue. But um, but I think it is 
important to keep the front, the street front active. Um, and and I, I guess I would think that you could put in the side door, if you have the reception area in the, the front of the space towards, yeah, um, and then have the side, that's your reception. Yeah. You can actually control that door and this door from here, and then, you know, waiting, and then you just have your stuff happening here. So that, so that front here. door doesn't have to be an uh, exit only, you know, like an emergency exit. You can have your, you know, an indoor entrance and a, and a street entrance and have, you know, you wouldn't necessarily have to have the shades down sort of, you know, uh, mm -hmm. uh, you could be open to the to the uh, to the um, to the street, um, yeah. and that's to me. I think that's the concern. Um, I, I'm I'm fine with the percentage with the with the um, you know what what would we be at thirty eight or thirty eight percent um, as long as we as long as we can keep that mm -hmm. front door. Um, sort active. of open and act active, you know, um, understanding that you, you, right, that it's kind of a neat building f for this because you do have, you know, you get in and you can come all the way through, so so you can park on either side um, and get in, you know, off of this access yeah, corridor. One of the issues we had is I wanted to have a handicap accessible bathroom in the suite because the common areas, the bathroom is so far. Yeah. that it's difficult for patients so my plan was to use the back entrance for staff so we can keep a bathroom and not have people walk through the office where people the privacy part to me is more where the patient are located than the right. front of the building because I have people with procedure being done people getting um, x-rays being done so I was trying to divide the you know more of a front user friendly but more of a privacy back so people couldn't really walk through the back in my scenario but obviously that's why we're here to talk about it but um, Yeah, I'll just reiterate. I had the same concerns when I read this. I don't have a problem with being over the percentage, although I would prefer something more retail-like. But I, I would have a problem with blocking up that storefront. So if you can leave it open, I assume there's no, is it HIPAA or HIPAA? I cannot remember. HIPAA? H -I -P -A -A. Yeah, are there any HIPAA issues with the uh, waiting room being visible? Um, not necessarily. What? No. Okay. Well, at least that would be active. There'd be light. See some movement. Yeah. I mean, if, if, if the practice is as busy as you're saying, that's what I was thinking about is, you know, if you've got this front door, if you really do have a busy practice, it it's going to see more activity, you know, than maybe the karate does between uh, during school hours, for example. Um, it's just... Well, we want, we want the streetscape to be active. I mean, I, yeah. I drove past there and looked at it, and the, the dentistry area looks just dead. All the time. <laughs> it's all. It's yeah. Um, so, but it wasn't. It wasn't immediately obvious where you were. Pl you were planning to have the access, and have up front is what we want. Yeah. But you guys are okay with coming in through the lobby. I mean, it's it's better for weather, for sure. I think opening a door right from the street. If it's not a retail location, if it were a retail location, I would say you have to have that door on the street. Yeah. So I, think, I think half and half. half. If it, if it needs to look yes. active, you know, if it looks inaccessible. But the door wouldn't go away. Right. They just add a door. Yes. Yeah. Okay. <clears throat> so we're just going to end up with. Um, a big medical zone. No. It's going to be all professional offices up and down the street. Which isn't terrible if there were an active retail zone as well. You know, it's it's a good solid use and it's con you know with a lot of motion to yeah. it. Yeah. Right. We just you know we are we are risking pample mouse at this moment. It, like this will they're going to lose more. They've lost more street traffic with Zynga leaving, but in general. 
like we're solidifying it. Have they though? That's a really specific yeah, use. Yeah. Totally I'm just, I understand. I'm just, it's it's a big retail spot. I guess I'd say anything yeah. would be tough We've because it's a big. Two more places coming in that hopefully yeah. will add some foot traffic. In that. Well, up the street, right? Up the street. That's what I'm saying. Yeah, yeah. So when the if that's what I'm saying, like when the post office is there, then you start to have some flow. Right. And you know maybe some of the little guys in the middle start filling in or becoming a little bit more active as well. And that I get it. I just now we've created two islands. I know. I know. And it's it's a struggle we're fighting with. Do we keep the building full and occupied, or do we leave it empty Understood. and it's dead either way? Yeah. Yeah. No, I'm with you. All right, so um, is there anything that we've said that is a non-starter for you? No, I'll have to rethink the design and you know, cost effectively if I can make it work. So I would have you open to it. I wasn't sure what to expect today because um, I know we want to keep retail, but I'll open a retail store next, I promise. <laughs> <laughs> Ice cream. Ice cream. <laughs> well, why don't you just sell shoes? Hello, croissant. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so do we want to continue this or do we want to actually, we have to continue this, right? Or do we want to make a decision with conditions? It's up to you if you want to make a decision I mean, without the benefit of seeing like a floor plan and... Yeah. Um. Well, I've got a question about the parking. Since you moved from retail, which had zero, now you're back to an institutional, which requires two spaces per thousand square feet. They are within 300 feet of a public parking lot, so it's not required. Mm. 5.81. This is doesn't say that for institutional. I don't know. This is, this is office. This is office. This okay. Is yeah. I looked at that. Yeah, even in the building code, this is still office. Yeah. Okay. I mean, I'd be curious if, if it's worthwhile petitioning to have that spot right in front, be a handicap spot. Well, which one is the handicap spot? I don't know. I'm just going to look on the... Um, is that one there? In 2013, that first one is the handicap spot. It is. I mean, if that There's is the case, that's nicely located. Yeah. So. <laughs> yeah, it's definitely shorter. Yeah. Yeah. Shorter walk from the front. Not everybody has an handicap parking. I understand. Right. There are all those red lines. <laughs> 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 Should have been. <laughs> <laughs> yep. You can see the stripes. Yeah. It's right here. Yep. Perfect. That's nice. <laughs> um, I guess in in turn the question came up, do we approve it or um, do we continue and I guess my take is we could approve it, but then we need to go through all these conditions that may or may not work and draft them in a way so that it remains flexible enough for her. Um, I guess I, I think it would probably be better off if you sort of work out how it, take the feedback we've given you, see whether it's going to work, see, you know, sort of develop what that how the space is going to, um, how you're going to do that space and then come back and we can just talk through that and make sure that that's, yeah. so that we don't need to put restrictions on you that then may restrict you too much from what you want to do. Is this, so I guess my follow-up question, is that an opportunity for us to say we are unhappy with the street activity of the dentist office, which is part of this whole unit, so the whole building is going over the needs the waiver it's not just this office well it would be for the whole building understood right. so is it an opportunity for us to say you know is there something that can be done so that the front entrance to the dentist office is used more often i mean it's they not change what they did we knew that when we approved yeah. the dentist office that there was the potential for all of these to fall that way okay yeah. and they had a gym in the middle there that wasn't going to last we knew that yeah. Um, so, gotcha. So the, the two big things are to keep that front as open as possible, not block the windows, use both entrances. 
and you should be able to make it work. It's a pretty standard space for a, a small, I don't call it a small practice, but for a medical practice, that's ideal layout, really. Those doors, could the back be a staff only and have a, a side door added in front on top of the front door, or it needs to be flowing through the, the space? No, I would think that you'd have a side door. Yeah, lobby. And yeah. so that people that need to go to the, all right, I, just like, I, I don't know if the dentist has an indoor bathroom or not, but I know, right, um, Yes. Something I went to in here. Did the, the restaurant have one? The re I thought I was in this building and they made me walk all the way down here yeah, to go to the bathroom. Yeah, when you're in Zynga, you would go all the way down here. Oh, that's what it was. So, yeah. yeah, Zynga. Yeah. 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 Um, way down and, the hallway. Yeah, and so you, that's what you did is, is go back out the door and down the hallway. Um, and I would assume that's... So you're sp you don't want that. You want to pull well, some... People who can walk, I let them walk. But people who have a cast or 104, I don't know, that's going to be a long way. So I need to have, I'd like to give them access to the corridor. Um, but as you get into the suite, you know, there's a lot of walls that Zynga had. We were trying to use a little bit of that design not to reach, you know, to gut the space. And right. that increases in cost, which I cannot afford. And so when you walk in, you go towards the back, there's a corridor that narrows down. Um, so it's hard to have public walk there. I would keep it more for our kind of flow of, yeah. of the office flow. Yeah, I mean, I think, I think we're also would prefer that's not the entrance in any way. I think right. that's not what we're saying. It's, <coughs> yeah, it's. I think we, we would prefer the rear corridor to be staff only, actually. Yeah. We just want to, in, ensure that you're considering uh, a doorway into the lobby or from to and from the lobby uh, because that activates that effectively so um, when do you think you might have a layout that you could come back with for them to look at well, as soon as possible, I'll have to reach out to, the, to my build-out team, the building team, and see how quickly we can design. How does it need to be a formal architectural design or like a graph of what's the plan? And uh, One thing I'll caution you on is the uh, building inspector will want to have some kind of a document, especially when it comes to bathrooms, that he's sure is in compliance with the plumbing code and the handicap code. So for those reasons, I would encourage you to get a design professional that can convey that. Hey, but you're not building a bathroom, are you? She said she was. Yeah. Oh, you said you were going to. Yeah. Oh, okay. I'm sorry. Yeah. 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 That's good. We're, you, we're you in favor. You don't need construction documents, but you need a, a plan that's delineated accurately. Yeah. Should we maybe think about this in, um, on March 26th? Sure. I think that would give you enough time? I hope so, yeah. Okay, so okay. for now we'll see March 26th at 7.30. Be early on March 26th. <laughs> <laughs> Move. I get a motion to continue this. <coughs> um, move that we continue the discussion of the modification to the 40 yard plan approval for 30 Haven Street, the wedding foot and ankle cyclist, until Monday, March 26, 2018, at 7.30 p.m. Second. All in favor? I'll see you then. Yes. 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 Yes.
Okay. Um, okay. Did you want to recap? Yeah, we started talking about this a little bit because we were running early. Uh, we were for something to put from from these groups. <laughs> um, these are. I'm just going to erase the lines. <laughs> Basically, oh, yeah. we just kind of looked at some sketching that I was doing where we were talking about the different areas around certain portions of the downtown here and what they could be or what they shouldn't be. Um, so this is, this is the three parcels that make up that, those apartments that are bordered by Green Ash and Washington and I guess High Street as well. Uh, and it shows you the existing lots, how many units are on there, and what does what that equates to in, as far as density goes. Across the three parcels, it equates to about 40 units per acre. We talked about how there's a grade drop-off as you come south, and um, how uh, developments could take advantage of that to high parking, for example. Uh, which areas would strictly be residential, Green Street side, for example, um, and which ones could accommodate commercial in the typical 40R. Uh, in general, though, we were talking that we probably wouldn't write sub-districts. It was a much more complicated process that we would issue design guidelines that had specific criteria for either conditions or locations. Uh, and then we we talked about really needing some input from historic on what things like what what streets like Green Street are what they should be you know, what can be done to those buildings by the the owners of a home versus if it gets sold what we need to know a little bit more about the history of that. Uh, but not just Green Street now, you know, as you kind of come away from here too, you start to know. <coughs> there's more sketches. Can I first ask, um, if, if I may, um, first of all, I'm, I'm really, uh, and I know I'm good for others here, really grateful that you folks are tackling this. I know we talked about this, whatever that was, <coughs> uh, three months ago, mm -hmm. um, about the need for, um, for a look at this. Um, and since that time, we've obviously had a, the other developments on, on Main Street and on, uh, I think it's Chapin, um, which also border on, uh, on some residential neighborhoods and historic neighborhoods. So I'm really glad, and I know I speak for others in those neighborhoods, um, although I'm not speaking for those <laughs> folks, um, that th this is definitely more than timely. I just wanted to ask, though, with respect to those other neighborhoods, aren't there other... Uh, other areas where within the downtown smart growth district where there may be like the Chapin development or the the Sunoco development where there could be further I, I just don't recall the full scale of the downtown smart growth district is this the only area where there's or is this just the most most likely no, no, this is only the first slide <laughs> oh, okay. I, I think this was right this is the the I don't want to speak for Nick but this was the easiest sort of way to start think place yeah, okay. to start thinking about how we're going to do this because okay. um, it's the most obvious um, yeah, it's I mean in terms of the the overall picture we've got the business B is now all entirely within the downtown smart growth district um, obviously business the business B on the eastern side is bordered by a 40 and some other uh, zones and there are, are zone boundaries that come into play I mean, specifically shape and have is on the border between the business B slash 40 R and the a40 uh, as you can see here, I mean, it, it's sort of a mixed mixed bag of, of things. So yeah, it's in the process of, this map is in the process of being updated um, by our mapping service. It gets updated once or twice a year, but it, once it's updated, it will show that the downtown smart growth district extends across the entire green <coughs> area entire downtown, area. yeah. Um, and one quick, so there's 
plans you need to endorse if you want to like take turns or whatever during the discussion and just sign them. Because <laughs> I know that can take a long time. So, okay. Okay. The, uh, so th that's that's the existing map that we're looking at. I mean, there's we don't have the topography, and there's a su substantial change of grade and so forth as you go from the top of that down to the to the railroad tracks. We did manage to include the uh, the extra right aid. <laughs> in the, the smart growth area. So we haven't done anything more than that uh, at the moment. Can I just ask then, is the, um, is the, I don't know what people have different opinions about what that other color is, the pink, the magenta, whatever that other color is, is that, is that the, um, the S20 area? What is that? S15. 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 Oh, S15. Oh, underlying. It's S15. Okay. So, so the downtown smart growth district. Then, even though there, I do see that A40 area back there, although I don't, I can't recall whether um, there are, there certainly must be single family residences in that area, are. Yeah. as there are in, in the other area. And I, from my perspective, and I don't, I mean, I, I appreciate the opportunity to to speak here, and I don't want to, I don't want to un, unduly, I don't want to <laughs> speak too much, um, un, un, unless and until it's the right time, but. Um, I, I know from the historical commission, uh, we we have obviously an interest in the historic in those homes that are on the inventory. But as I know, I articulated at many of, of the other meetings, um, the concern uh, is not is not exclusively with respect to those structures that are within the, his, the, the, the confines of the list right. um, that are somewhat protected. In fact, many of the homes in that Green Street area, as well as you know, the area o over on Woburn and, and elsewhere, um, those are, I, I use the term historic in quotes or with a small h, um, you know, those, are, those are significant original residential neighborhoods. Um, Long-term use. Long-term use and, and, and historic with a small H in the right. sense that you know they they are among the the earliest settlements in 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 Reading. So I would express some concern, and I know others on the on the uh, historical commission also just had a concern from that broader um, perspective about the way in which. Um, and I suppose people could say that this would also hold true for other homes that may not be within the small H or in the actual on the list, the way that the development of the downtown smart growth district were to interface with, with all of those residences. And I think that you all, I would encourage you all to, to look at all of that, not just with respect to the historic homes or those historic residential neighborhoods, but anywhere where, and I know you do to a certain extent, I know the requirements <coughs> include that as well, but um, I think I was hoping this approach, I'm not sure I understand the difference between not approaching it from a sub-district or otherwise. I think all of, <coughs> all of these, these standards or these guidelines need to address the way in which the, the downtown smart, smart growth district interfaces with the residential neighborhoods that it's going to abut. And, and I think that um, I'm right there with you that that's really um, that's um, the big thing that we need to sort of um, collectively figure out how that's going to that's going to work because you're right it's not just the it's not the big H historic or the little H historic but also the residential and all those all those. Um, edges and so to explain sort of where we were headed or where we think we might head with um, with this is that in terms of, of you know we brought, we originally brought up the idea of sub districts and we we got some feedback from from uh, from the state um, and basically the the feedback was if you develop a sub district you're essentially Creating another, di you're redrawing the map. Um, you're creating another district. So it's a, it's like you took w what was one big district and breaking it up into two or three or four, however many right. subdistricts we have. And so that's going back in, in going back to town meeting, going back through the whole process of, 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 um, of re, um, 
reapproving the downtown Tomorrow growth district with the sub districts in it. Is that the I don't, case, John? Is that actually the case that, that sub districts they, within it, the district would have to go back to town meeting? They do. They yes. do. Yeah. And I, they have to be approved. I don't think that's, I mean, that's not that we're trying to avoid town meeting, but I, I think when we can get to the same sorts of, um, I think we can do better actually than drawing lines on a map and saying the, the these the um, parcels in this within these borders are going to be like this because what you just described and at least what I have in my mind is a set of conditions that said in the design guidelines that says when you're and right we need to be careful on what is specifically the language is but something like if you're um, on a street with some small H historic buildings or um, adjacent to residential district or building or whatever we decide then th these are this is a set of design guidelines that you need to apply to whether it's the setback or the slope line you know that 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 um, view line or yeah or whatever it is but but have that be conditioned to the your the environment of the parcel um, at, at the time um, and then and we can define that way it's not linking specific parcels but um, but um, sort of what that environment is and I think the other thing is you know some of these neighborhoods some of these areas will change um, and what the sort of how that what your neighbor is may be different you know 10 years from now what it is today and you want to be able to have that flexibility to adapt um, and so I think that that approach of not developing some districts mm -hmm. sort of gives us a little bit better control may I ask a specific sure. question with respect to that um, and I, I don't profess to know the, um, the downtown smart growth district regulations or even the zoning um, at all uh, but one thing I'm curious about uh, and I took a look at the DHCD um, guidelines I took a look at the the CMR uh, requirements and again I don't profess to understand any of them um, <laughs> I hope you folks do um, but but what I and, I, and what I'm a, trying to articulate may not even be your interest, but let me just articulate it. Um, the, the, uh, uh, my understanding is that uh, one requirement within the downtown smart growth district requirements that DHCD does require, and, I, and I'm curious whether there's a, a distinction if it's a sub-district, is that similar to um, or I viewed it as similar to 40B restrictions that uh, that your guidelines can't unduly restrict the development, which I, I, I said is similar to, to, to 40B in the sense that the town can't can't uh, unduly restrict or interfere with the the economic uh, uh, rights of a developer. And my concern when I was looking at it is um, if that requirement that that could a developer who wanted to do a development which might uh, border or abut a residential neighborhood um, make the argument that or even would your would your conditions or guidelines separate from a sub district could could DHCD say that those arguably could unduly restrict uh, a developer um, from from a development and thereby render those guidelines invalid versus if you had a sub district you might be able to, I don't know the answer to this but you might be able to have tighter or more restrictive guidelines and you folks may not even be interested in the more restrictive guidelines but I know at least speaking for myself and and others um, in, in the rest of the downtown smart growth district I know the town's interest is in Commercial development and business development, and de business development and and tax revenue, et cetera, et cetera. So that so there's there's not a desire to limit the growth and limit the development and limit what it looks like vis-a-vis -vis the residential 
uh, neighborhoods that it abuts. But for others, as I know I've articulated and others have articulated, downtown smart growth development, we think, should look very different, much smaller. It should be much smaller in scale um, in the areas where it borders the residential districts. Some would argue, you know, even much greater setbacks. Some would argue uh, but, but more restrictions. Jonathan, you, realize, you realize that the residence districts you're talking about are not in the downtown, right? What do you mean? Well, because there are no residence districts in the downtown. You had this discussion with the, yeah, it's, right. it's the residential, residential properties, properties. Right. but there yeah. are no residence okay. districts. I do understand that. I'm talking it's like on the edges. Right. The edges there's there's residential purple. land uses, but there's not residential zones. Right. So we'll, we'll call them dwellers. Yeah. So yeah, whatever you call them. Right. The, the argument there is that, that development next to residential residences However, they got there, and you know, one could argue that you know they, they obviously predated zoning, um, and they are his, historic with the small H. I'm not talking about residential zones. I'm talking about residential neighborhoods. Um, and all I'm saying is that you know, as we argued, or as I argued, and, and others argued with respect to Green Street, um, you know, projects should be much smaller. They they should be much smaller in scale. And and, I, and I'm not trying to re-argue that. I'm, all I'm saying is that that if you saw similarly that that downtown smart growth developments that abut residential structures, resident, residential neighborhoods, regardless of their zoning, they should also be smaller in scale in terms of, you know, height restrictions or setback restrictions or other restrictions. Yeah. Um, that 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 if you didn't do perhaps if you did do it as a subdistrict versus if you didn't do it as a subdistrict, a developer could could argue that that unduly restricts our development and you can't do that. And I guess all I'm saying is I, I, think I can that unduly we get restrict the same is actually control. defined in the CMR. Yeah. We get the same control whether it's yeah. a sub district or a okay. design guideline because the design guideline would be written for the sub district. Okay. Right. So as yeah. they or for the C yeah. Right. Okay. So, so this is how it's defined because it's capitalized unduly restrict means to add unreasonable costs or unreasonably impair the economic feasibility of proposed projects in a district by means of a provision of smart growth zoning or a design standard. Right. So, I mean, I would take that to mean like we require 80% of the units be affordable and or that, something like that. The only pushback we've ever gotten, and I think our design guidelines demand quality design, the buildings we're getting have a lot more features to their, their look. The only pushback we've ever gotten is on density, and a unit count, right, and affordability. We never push back on, well, I really don't want to add the corner, so I don't want to step this back, or I don't want to break up the elevation, or I don't want to use quality materials. It's always unit count. So density is set at 20%, right? That's the minimum. 25 for oh, yeah. 25 now, right? Yep. And um, so the state allows you to say that number assuming that that must be the affordable cutoff somewhere and we're always allowing a little more than that for the most part not the smaller for unit one but so they should be affordable i think our demands should should still fall in line with reasonable expectations and that would mean lower densities smaller scale you know or scaling up towards scale, scaling away from the residents mm -hmm. Limit, limits in, in stories, heights? Yeah, definitely. I mean, if you look at the sketches I did, I was starting to address some of the street pieces, and, um, you know, and the board had good comments. And, and again, those are just my sketches. First look, they are not the board's opinion on them. And in fact, the board uh, had some other opinions on those. Mm -hmm. Can, so, may I make a comment that goes actually way back to the original smart growth planning and determination of what was to be parceled out and identified as smart growth. Her area was pretty well represented by probably 10 people who were there. And uh, one of the concerns that we had was being targeted. That is, that somebody would come in. Seriously, this is, this is that Green Street, uh, Gold Street, Ash Street portion. And we were shocked when we saw it targeted as a smart growth and we said does that mean some developer is going to come in? I'm just saying this is, this is from the conversation does that mean some developer is going to come in and buy up all the parcel and throw <coughs> up a huge apartment building there's nothing preventing that from happening but if you took a look at the demographics 
of the people who've been living here. I'm a relative newcomer, and I've been there 20 years. And a lot of people have been there 35 years. The possibility of those little dwellings turning over is probably pretty low, because there is very little housing stock that's affordable, and we consider those little houses affordable. Do you so I'm just, I'm just throwing that out as a concern that was mentioned about a developer coming and buying up these cute little houses, dwellings, <coughs> and it, it's not without the realm of possibility, but it was, it was our biggest concern. Well, if it would change the whole tenor of the area and of the town, not just not just from a personal standpoint, but from a standpoint of it changes the complexion of what is running. <coughs> and there was our concern on a personal level. But that, we can't prevent that from happening. Somebody came in and offered me $3 million. I might say yes. <laughs> Pam, can I just clarify? Yes. When you said like the original smart growth zoning, right. were you talking about back in like 2007, 2009, or were you talking about like the a year or two one. ago. When we started putting okay. stickers yeah. on yeah. things. Yeah. Okay, okay. That one. Okay. Now, and and I was just listening. A lot of these people, I didn't, at that time, I didn't really know. And that was our concern. Sorry. I thought it was only three people. But I just wanted you to be aware of that feeling. And it's, it's really an emotional one, but it's also an economic one. We don't necessarily think that the people that are my neighbors will turn over their properties to put up an apartment building. And this is, <clears throat> I do not have a crystal ball, yep. um, but I will but tell you that the challenge of assembling properties mm -hmm. in that type of way is not uh, something that developers are going to be looking at right. for a good long time. <coughs> like I don't, yes. I mean, I just, it's, it's a challenge, and it, the market has to be white hot for people to be. It's but hot here. So. It is not even close to white hot. But and so even it's so, uh, one of the properties that uh, recently sold to a contractor was a cute little blue house on Green Street, almost all the way down. Uh, that wasn't a total knockdown. That was a deconstruct and now go up a little higher to make a better floor plan, that enhanced the neighborhood greatly. Yeah. But that's not our apartment building. And that's... But, and so we, we, we expect... Economics of Reading right now is teardowns, 100%. <laughs> I mean, but, but, but in that, that type that of really, way. That took the footprint, and it didn't put up an apartment complex. It improved the site tremendously. And, and that's what I'm saying, is right so now expect, you're, you're looking at that type of that's economics. Right. So our being on the smart growth district, as a mixed commercial residential, we understand the next door might be a podiatrist, might be a, a computer specialist, because we are permitted <coughs> to have businesses in this whole area. But most of us have houses. Yeah. And uh, I don't, you know, being targeted as smart growth, being identified as smart growth with an overlay and the whole bit. We kind of shake our heads and saying maybe 20 years or 40 years down the line, but <coughs> other than this one parcel for the ACE building, we don't really see that kind of rampant growth. And, and I'm agreeing with you. Right, because in the two pieces of property that have, well, there have now been three pieces of property that have sold in this little enclave. Uh, one of them um, is further up on Ash. We cleaned it up, spiffied it up, put up new windows and the whole bit. The other was a build-up, and the other one, they're cleaning up the hardwood floors and they've moved in. And it's the tendency is, and the properties have maintained or increased in value, but their value is as a single family or a two family or a three family. I think. So I think that's what, that's why we're kind of shocked. Are we being targeted for somebody to come in and buy us? But again, so I think, you know, where your neighborhood has an advantage also is it's walkable. And so it's... It's it, crowded now. It, but, it's, but it's it's walkable. a walkable area. And the more interest that there is in the commuter rail station and other kind of retail 
options on on Haven Street and potentially High Street at some point that increases it as a walkable neighborhood oh, and so it just is. in my experience I don't see developers wanting to assemble little tiny lots there I think where we've been talking about with these huge buildings and the you know established um, parking lots that we've been looking at down here was that the those the make much more that? sense because those are big no this is a uh uh, a look, opposite Green Street, obviously. Um, Here's Washington. Up in the top. Apartment Greenish, 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 Greenish well, Those, what, five apartment buildings? There's uh, eight. 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 It's, it's right. got some movement to it over there. I think those, yeah, and that's what we've been talking about in terms of kind of restricting use, but not restricting use at the same time. Right, and I would put that in the category of affordable apartment complexes. They're not super expensive. Right, that's actually one of the issues with these, these particular buildings. Someone made a comment uh, once at town meeting was that mm -hmm. <clears throat> this is some of the most affordable housing in town, that's and so, it seems to be working. I don't know that it's going to fall tomorrow and someone's going to come and knock Very it Very little down. turnover. Right. So Very little turnover. So, so again, this, it's just how to deal with, yep. this was just to bring up some points. Okay, if we start looking at guidelines that are specific to what's happening in the neighborhoods, how do we address what's happening? Because obviously the north side of this is, again, is on Green Street. That's a very special case. Yep. The south side on Washington and High, very different. Yep. Very yeah. different from that. Yep. So potentially this development could focus mm. its density its activity down on that south end and the top side would just be what's on green street now maybe or something that looks like that or feels like right. that you know low density low but density. also as dave was saying being careful at the top because of the <clears throat> grade right. and the fact that uh, even as a certain height building could end up looking like a skyscraper because it's at the top of a hill. Right, and then we have the shadow. Correct, shadow and so area. I think that was another piece that we were talking about, was mm -hmm. keep taking the grade into account right. um, yeah, as, as part of this. Going all the way back to, to the original Smart Growth District discussions, um, the concern was not, I mean, there was never a thought of, of targeting. There was a there was a thought a concern That's about I said. that was an emotion that we have. I'm, I'm, I'm separating that from the reality. <laughs> the concern was was um, opportunity moving forward because if you came in here, we had the great big fire on the on the apartment building on the other side of of uh, Haven the Street. School. Yeah. Is that the one? Sanborn School. Yeah. Sanborn School. Is that the one you're talking about? Yeah. 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 And. I mean, if you came in and, and three houses got burned out, there's serious restriction on what you can do. Uh, and you can't build a bigger house. You can't build a different you kind of thing. You can reuse the same basement. You can, re you can reuse the same footprint, but you can't expand it. I right. mean, there's a, there's a lot of zoning constraints because they're non-conforming with the district. It's because it is a business B district. And the part of the smart growth was to, to increase the opportunity if and when, or when and if um, the properties, the substantial property or properties uh, became available. Because there's no, there's no issue of targeting. We don't want to move anybody out. No, no, I, I but, said targeting. I mean, right. that was the feeling. That was the, oh my goodness, is somebody going to sweep in and make apartment complexes no, out of I think that houses. I think that Green Street was included in it because it's in the middle of the downtown. Right. Right. <laughs> it's okay. literally yeah. like it's part of the business B and we just yeah. said the whole business B should be this. And mm -hmm. part of the so. the wonderful part of it is it's a short walk up to the middle of town. Right. Right. So we realize its value. Yep. Yeah, I mean the original smart growth we tried to push it you know to the far side of the, the train tracks where we've got now the 40b developments you know the uh, and we were, we we're trying to initially we were trying to make it larger uh, because we wanted to be sure to include the uh, down the McDonald's and the and the corner uh, 
along that side of the, of the railroad tracks. Well, and Maybe. the reality is that you know if <clears throat> if um, downtown Reading, uh, I'm going to say, continues to um, uh, become more active, Mushroom. become become more uh, become a more active place, more restaurants, more um, more sort of. Um, a, a life Services. to it from that yeah. from that okay. standpoint. You, the Green Street, the Green Street neighborhood is a gold mine yeah. in terms of what you're sitting on. Think about it from a national perspective. You, this street has, let you said it, you know, cute little houses, um, a uh, a a um, uh, two minute walk yeah. from a train station uh, that's a half an hour. From a major um, <coughs> uh, metro, you know, major downtown, um, walkable to, you know, hopefully lots of restaurants. I mean, people, you you can only find this in, in this condition in in a handful of of towns around the country, yeah. and this is like what this is what people are looking for, um, and so um, you know. It, it can't. It really shouldn't be understated that you know there's not a there's not um, that 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 um, this is a this is a real gem in in Green Street really um, to, to to and if we can if we can continue to keep it in sort of. Um, Sort of make sure that it doesn't get swallowed up, which is, I think, what which your is, thing is. It, yeah. Exactly. Um, and the reason that, that I'm here is to the, support the Historical Commission's stance that we need to be mindful yeah. of that relationship of new growth with established dwellings. So, and with, that's just to be. Uh, yeah, so, with that, though, um, the the other thing is we do need to, and I think this is really the next time we pick this up, we're going to have to 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 address this. Um, and, and sort of think through this is that you know every not every many of the potential development sites in downtown are adjacent to a residential mm -hmm. um, use use yeah you know, I mean there's really hard, you'll be hard pressed to find many that either haven't been um, you know planned and or, or developed um, uh, that don't abut a residential use um, and so what we need to do is sort of come up with the right way that both allows um, downtown Reading to continue to thrive without, you know, impinging on, um, you know, um, so with that. And, and some of that, I think, is like what Dave mentioned, is being mindful about um, about grades, existing grades, right? I mean, you could... I think there's some opportunity there about making sure uh, that um, we're mindful that um, you know buildings could be taller in some places um, and not feel more imposing. Um, you know uh, that there's a difference between being in the back of a building, in the back of in, in a residence's backyard, than in their you know in their in their Facing. Fun and um, yeah. but, you know those sorts of things. But back to what started yeah. off the, the the conceptualizing, just so that I, sure. I can try to understand it. If you're, if you're not talking about um, establishing sub districts with those specific articulated <coughs> standards or guidelines that that address those, um, but rather you're just talking about applying them within the confines of your existing design guidelines in those areas that do abut residential neighborhoods. How, how do you, how, what is it that you're going to then articulate or, or construct and put in writing? It almost sounds like you're saying, well, so we, we, we know what we want to do in those areas and we can do them within our existing guidelines, so we'll just apply them to the next one going forward. Are you going to articulate them and write them down somewhere? Yeah, or? yeah. 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 100%. We're going to write the yeah. sub-districts, but just not going to be called sub-districts. Right. How's that? Yeah. And they just ha they just be like guidelines applicable to... Well, it's, it's be like, like the, if then. If yeah, it, this, it borders yeah. this, yeah. this yeah. Yeah. Okay, okay, it's, okay. It's a rules-based kind of thing. So it. you know, when you've got this circumstance, this, this is what you this consider, is, and this yeah. is okay. Yeah. Now, did you originally ask what 
what restrictions there would be with respect to his homes on the on the uh, is that what your question was Nick? I, mean, I, I have questions about things like that if you think about the last three or four houses on Green Street going towards uh, High Street right they're the small they're, they're probably the original shape of, of what was there they're the small one and a half story right front entrance little These right orange here. type they're yeah, almost those. the same layout all the way right the right so so what happens if that person comes in and wants to blow off that roof and add a second floor? What does that do to the, the character of that neighborhood? Well, Some of the houses have already had that done to them, and while they're well done and well maintained, you know, they're beautiful little homes, they certainly don't reflect the character of what you keep calling the historic nature of that neighborhood. And so how far do we let that go, or, or what kind of restrictions are on those properties? Is it the things you guys are going to have to come back to us with so yeah. that we can understand well, what the guidelines look Virtually like? Virtually none. I mean, the sad truth is that even, first of all, the home has to be on the list. Yeah. In very few homes, I don't remember, and I should have checked beforehand, very few homes on Green Street are, in fact, on the list. Yeah. Um, yeah. And, and, and even with respect to them, uh, the restrictions are, are, are very limited. But with respect to the other homes, sadly, there are no restrictions. I mean, so anybody who wants to do anything to those other homes, regardless of the impact on what, what some people would consider its, its historic character, uh, it's, it's fair well, game. And right. even with respect to homes that are on the list, the, the only restriction is that they can't be demolished without coming before the historical commission. Right. So and the, even then, we can't... The important thing about that neighborhood is that it's residential. It's one or two family. It has a certain scale to it. Although, you know, each individual piece could be slightly bigger as long as it stayed within that. There's really nothing else, you know, about that neighborhood that's, I don't want to say important, but... That we can hang our hat. No, you, you can I, say I it think, has I to be correct. Correct. I think you're correct. I yeah. think you're correct. Yeah. It's not because there are restrictions within the uh, the parameters of the historical uh, demolition yeah. delay right. bylaw. Yeah. But yeah. Even, right. even given that, the, the two homes that have recently sold and been rehabbed have been improved greatly by a cleanup, a spiffy up, and in, some, in one case, that little blue house now has a, a higher scale. But it has maintained its look yeah. in the neighborhood. So I think people coming into the neighborhood aren't going to put uh, an IM pay building up in that location or anything that approaches a uh, Frank Lloyd Wright. It's uh, going to be, they know what Reading is, they're not going to put something up that's going to be ghastly and it will be in keeping. Are you and implying I, that rights and pays buildings are ghastly? <laughs> <laughs> I'm saying not in keeping and I'm saying it's a very sure. different thing. I have no problem with like a Frank Lloyd Wright, but I wouldn't necessarily want to make sure to me. Is this property right here, 21 Green Street, is this currently under construction? 21. It's right, um, uh, is this the It's one? the blue one. No, it's not 21. That's, that's, that's the one that you questioned me about. Okay. It's blue. Yeah. I don't think it's that one. I think it's the one down. Yeah, down. No, that's the yellow one. The one next to it. Oh, yeah, we'll get that. I'm just curious. I think that one's currently being gutted and potentially raised. I think no, it's not going to be demolished. No, raised no. like off yeah, higher. It's just the blue saying. one. It's it's not the yellow one, which no. is the one that you. Oh, maybe I have the wrong one. Maybe it's this What's one. What's the address on that one? Nineteen. This one right here is nineteen. This and one is twenty-one. One next to it? Yeah, it's not that one. It's not the one closest to the right. apartment. It's the one so, over. So going forward, we, we certainly have more than just this area to talk about. Um, mm -hmm. uh, there are other areas, and you know, welcome to look at any and all of them, and bring up big picture, small picture concerns about them. We're going to have to start addressing them now, um, right. um, so that we're ready when something comes. For the 40R construction, I, I think I've seen the Chapin Street. I've seen, we've seen the 467. Is that the, the address mm -hmm. on Main? Yep. <laughs> uh, we've got the postmark, right? right? Mm -hmm. We've got Gould, mm -hmm. and now, and are there any others? We don't have any filings for no any other others files. currently, okay. so I don't know what's happening. I don't know what I don't know, but <laughs> sure. I, I was just making sure I, I know all of the those are all players. Of them. Well, okay. the Haven Street is also the other forty hours. Yeah, yeah, but that's constructed. That's you know already that. in place. These are developments. Yeah. Sure, are, and you can see the the different variety of developments, right? I mean, uh, uh, Sunoco is sort of in keeping with what we saw from Post Office and Gould, 
Chapman. But Chapman Street certainly isn't. That's just more like town. It's like three units. It's it's more like townhouses. The one that uh, abuts the wetland. No. No, Chapman no. is uh, behind. Um, Mission of Deeds. Mission of Deeds. Mission of Deeds. Right. Yeah, it's like the last so piece. So what's the it. one that's jo behind Jordan's furniture? Oh, that's not. That's oh, a forty B. That's, that's a forty B. Forty B. Oh, that's Lakeview Ave. Yeah. And that's not downtown. And that's right. not really downtown, no. No. Right. <coughs> But I think Chapin Ave tells you the minimum lot size that you can put a 40 R <coughs> unit on. Yeah. This is 14 Chapin Ave right here. So Main Street's right here. This is Mission of Deeds. Um, Sunoco is right here. Okay, okay. So, so Julie's Wish Road Circle, is that the only area for the, uh, for the project or does it extend no, beyond that? This is the 14 Chapin project. It's okay. just a three unit. Totally residential for ER project. Yeah. Yeah. This, I mean, that lot happens to be straddling one of the zone uh, boundaries or, um, or on an edge. So that's in that's it. That right there is an interesting um, study in because um, they wouldn't have been able to do anything. They would have had to put a commercial building up there um it's right now it's it's a residential building right. it's non-conforming um uh they would have um they wouldn't have been able to to do anything except for rebuild on the exact footprint which you know you, you really it, it's tough to to really do that economically so um so you know they had basically had two options and this is the same with that, with that green with, right up against residential yeah um yeah, right this is an a40 district right here this property it's they either had the uh, they had the um, potential to use 40r yeah. and build um a three unit um uh three unit townhouse development um we actually the requirement was for four units but they get scaled back, get scaled back. Yeah. um or uh, build a commercial building yeah and, the, and what they and, ended up and the commercial with building certainly yeah. wouldn't have fit in so it's great the, to have the, the opportunity so it, yeah right. so it's good to have the opportunity that it should now you know it it, it got redeveloped um uh it's it's still residential um it actually provide i think it will probably provide a little bit of a better buffer yeah. between right. The, between the commercial and the rest of the neighborhood there. It um, did a great job. I mean, yeah. it's it's similar to those <clears throat> the two buildings where they tore down those big overgrown Victorians on um, Washington Street, yeah. those big ones, and they put the two side-by-side -side townhouses, which are quite nice. It reminds me of those in, mm -hmm. in terms of kind of <clears throat> yeah. not changing the nature at all. I think I think the concern that I heard in the Chase Street discussions is similar to what we had with the Gould, which was the whole setback issue and the density. And the I think everybody it truly just looks like a big house. Yeah. <laughs> so, so I think a couple of things um, that next time we talk about this, we'll we'll need to sort of start digging in on is. Um, is thinking about um, you know you start talking showing it on some of your graphics you know is there setback requirements um, uh, uh, is there on these edges um, are there you know view line requirements um, and then is are there there are different ways that we can define what um, street edges are um, um, meaning sidewalks or no, 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 no. I'm sorry. The meaning zones. Um, zones. different zones. Yeah, whether whether we we can do have different streets be um, or frontages be you know commercial versus versus residential. Can I say that we start by um, coming up with the guidelines as roughly as we want? So, for example, we could say at the corner of Green and Gould. You know. And then we figure out yeah. how, how do we gets, how do we get what, what are we trying to do, and then how do we write that so that it covers more than just that, or 
It's not as yeah. specific. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. We're not worried about trying to get the language exactly right the first time. Let's just get the all concepts. the parameters set up. You don't want it to be restricted. You want it to act as a guideline where it gives you the flexibility to say yay or nay. Right. And you butters the opportunity <clears throat> to say this is acceptable and this is not acceptable. Right. And right. To, to handle the fact that reading in five to ten years may be a different... Right. Who knows if the downtown right. is going to be in the downtown? Or, you know, what people's saying. commuting patterns are, whatever yeah. it is. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Just, <clears throat> well, we, we do have the busiest commuter rail station on the Yeah, that's right. <laughs> well, I had a comment that oh, why aren't we using the like buildable like space above the train tracks? <laughs> can't build over it. Um, you can't? No, you can't build over no, train tracks. You can't even work near them if your crane is going to fall towards you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, I did. I did. It's not like the mass bike. It's not like yeah. the mass bike. You can do anything you want. <laughs> so right. when do we want to resume this conversation and in like how do we want to tackle this work product? Um, well, I just did this using the GIS and the PDF, right? Using Bluebeam or something. So I think if everyone has those kind of tools or if they just want to draw on paper, just start writing ideas down. And I mean and welcome that from the from the community as well. Right. Um, Buy everybody a drink and have them start drawing on a plan. <laughs> <laughs> start, start thinking about start thinking about what control we do have and what control we don't have. Right? Like, okay, this is a historic small H neighborhood. We don't really have any control, so how do we protect it? You know, how do we write some guidance so that mm -hmm. we maintain at least its essence or something about it that's important? Okay, so do you guys want to like give us feedback? by Monday and then we'll take it and kind of try to gel it into something that we can talk about next time. Uh, a, a path for you mean a, a direction or you want actual no, I mean like what well, you're saying like if people have these tools and they have ideas they can submit right. ideas to us. Um, does that sound good? Yes. Oh, yeah. um, that sounds great. Are you talking about this Monday? Like a week from tonight and then that gives us time to like you know digest it and try to compile it and put certain like um, mm -hmm. ideas that are like each other and, you know, category. Yeah, basically. And then also provide our own feedback. Um, yes, absolutely. Which we'll do. Mm -hmm. I'd like to see some. Um, <coughs> this will yeah. be Anders' project in my mind. <laughs> <laughs> um, we'll work I together, of course. Help with GIS. But, but, so yeah. yeah. Right. Um, well. And, and then, I guess, uh, you know, I really, I think it is important um, to keep in mind the topographic nature um, of the of the district. Turn on the layer. You can see I did. Yeah. Yeah. And I don't know. I, I don't know how best to do that. <laughs> I don't know what tools we have available. I, was, that, I mean, I, I was just you know. I, I was just making two connections, which is Jean <clears throat> talking about the parking study that needs to happen, and that big parking spot and then I was thinking like who's got a 3D tool that might be able to yeah. use yeah. We can use uh, Google Earth and we can use yeah. SketchUp. Yeah. Um, okay. I don't know what you guys have but got all of that. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. Julie is it possible for you to send me these graphics? The ones that Nick prepared? Yeah. These right yeah. here? Yeah that's fine. Yeah, it's fine. I, I don't have any titles on them, so as long as you, when you're talking about them, understand those were just my first Ideas. thoughts that we yeah. talked about. Yeah. They weren't put up. Uh, I will, yeah. You and said board already had comments about them. Yeah, I love them, but I mean, they're on too. I thought you said Ron, because, and not John, and then I was like, he wouldn't say John because he wouldn't speak in the third person. <laughs> <laughs> so, so I was like, this is not a sign <laughs> <laughs> Okay, so send them to you, you, and Ron. Thanks. No problem. And what do you mean, uh, John, about the uh, topographic nature? Oh, so, you know, um, right, we have, we have, um, the grades, the grades yeah, the yeah. elevations, you know, and we might be able to use them to get gotcha. some, I'm gonna, uh, I'll put it bluntly, some bigger buildings yeah. without them being towering um, and imposing. Yeah. Um, so do you use the GIS system at all that's on the website? <coughs> well, Online mapping? It's, it's actually a very easy tool Super. if you go to the website. This is it right here. 
And you can see all of this information, including turning layers on, like the, the aerial photography. Is it, a, is it on the browser, is it, or yes. is it an application? It's within the browser on the website of the of the town. Okay, no, I have it. Is, it is your house painting. fantastic. It Very usable. Good, yes. Here's your house right here on the corner of Green and Ash Street. And he'll tell you who all, it's 87 Ash Street. And, and this is information. You can look at your property record card. You can look at <coughs> all sorts of information. It's, um, it's impressive. And it's then good. we have themes. Okay. And so you can turn on Would layers like you can me a link to that? turn on an area. Sometimes I have trouble going through the. Uh, I'll show you how to get website. to it. It's right on the front page of the town's website. There you go here. And then yep. there's a um, link at the bottom for maps. Okay. So click on that, and then click on this. This okay. teardrop. I'll map it. Yep. Okay. And there you are. And you can search by the address, by the name, the owner. You can yeah, and you can turn on all sorts of layers of. Um, Oh, you'll get the hang of it in less than half an hour, and you'll be cool. yeah. you'll get a lot of information. It's fun. Yeah. I, I was in this business. You can snoop yeah. around. <laughs> I've gotten away from it. Sorry, did you have to? So did, did you have another day we are going to work with this? Are you going to pick that later? Well, uh, one we put it on the next agenda, because the next agenda is not that full. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah, I think they can rally. I mean, we might as well. Sure. Yeah. yeah. Keep going. Have have done. Applications. Yeah, let's keep going. So okay. when is that? So March 12th. Can we get... A big map to like play with. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. Mm -hmm. I do better. <laughs> yeah, well, most people do, I think. So you need an acetate overlay so you can. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> you that a light that table. Just <laughs> edge, right? Overhead projector. Yeah, we'll, we'll get this all queued up. Okay. We'll try to get some good documents together that we can use. Um, I think it would be, what's the other one that's coming on the 12th? Um, was it Don's Woods? Maybe it would be like 8.30? Yeah. Yeah. Um. Great. All right. Thank you guys. Thank you, Thank you for coming. Thank you very much. Sorry? Thank you for showing up. Yep. Yeah. I show up even when you don't know it. <laughs> I think you got some upside. I'm sorry? I think you got some upside over there. I think, I think <laughs> things are going to... Move to adjourn. Yeah. We'll stay at the time. There's a second. All in favor? Thank you. Um, do we...